1445 BC, 2450 AM, the Israelites send spies into the land of Canaan. Joshua and Caleb are faithful and know that the Israelites can overcome the occupants of the land, and they are not scared of the great giants, the Anakim. The ten other spies report woe and messages of futility to Moses, and the whole nation is cursed to wander for forty years. Thirty-eight of these years are already over. The Anakim were the descendants of Anak, who was the son of Arba, who was the son of Noah and Namar after the flood. These people were originally noble and faithful, who were allies to Abraham, when he rescued Lot from the forces of Chedorlaomer after the plunder of Sodom and Gomorrah in 1872 BC. By this time, the Anakim had thoroughly assimilated with the local Canaanites and were now the enemies of the descendants of Abraham. Fearing the giants, the Israelites had been cursed. 1433 BC, 2462 AM King Latinus of Chittim died in Italia after reigning for 45 years dated by the Jesha record at 14 years after the Exodus. He is succeeded by King Abianus. This year is 204 years before the fall of Troy in 1229 BC, or 2448 months. The later Trojan people would migrate to Italy and build Rome in 753 BC, which was 680 years after this date, or 244,800 days after 1433 BC. This year was the 414th year since the birth of Isaac in 1847 BC, 1 Jesha. 1423 BC, 2472 AM. This is the date believed by the early Greeks when the mysteries of Eleusis were instituted in Athens. This alludes to the fact that it was around this time that foreign elements were mixing among the indigenous population. 1 Morals and Dogma. 1411 BC, 2484 AM. In the book of Jasher we read, And in the 36th year of the children of Israel's departure from Egypt, the Lord smote the heart of Sion, king of the Amorites, and waged war, and went forth to fight with the children of Moab. King Sion was an Amorite giant, a Rephaim of Bashan, anciently referred to as a land of giants. Sion attacked Moab at the instigation of Balaam the seer of Chaldea, who had fled Egypt after the exodus. Balaam fled Italia 123 years earlier, at the death of Esau's grandson Zepho in 1534 BC. Balaam's career was illustrious in antiquity, from Chaldea to Libya, Italia, Egypt and Bashan. Moabites are defeated by the Amorites under Sion and refuse Israel passage through the wilderness. This in turn enraged the Israelites and Moses leads them against the land of Bashan. The giant king Og and Sion are killed and many of the Rephaim and Anakim giants are slain with many Amorites. The Israelites take 60 cities of Argob. Also in this exact year planet Phoenix passes into the inner solar system completing its 138-year orbit on its way back out to the Kuiper Belt, at the far edge of the solar system. At this time, debris breaks away from the surface of Phoenix to become the Joshua Comet Group. Amenhotep III, who later became Tutmos IV, has erected the Temple of Luxor in Upper Egypt, which displays representations of the Virgin giving birth to the Sun. In the first scene of this prophetic textual episode, Thoth, Scribe of the Gods announces the birth of the Son of the Virgin. This temple was finished 1080 years before Alexander the Great ordered it to be rebuilt. It was ruined in 331 BC. In this year, Amenhotep III becomes Akinamen, switching his religious allegiance, beginning a 33-year reign to the end of 1379 BC. Later, he will again change his name to Akinaten, married to the beautiful Nefertiti. 1. Jesha, 2. Symbols, Sex and the Stars 1407 BC, 2488 AM Moses died at age 120. Joshua, one of the former spies in 1445 BC that surveyed Canaan, is elected the leader by Moses. Joshua, Yeshua, Saviour, is the older Hebrew for the Greek name Jesus. Joshua leads the Israelites in the conquest of Canaan to enforce the law of the lots implemented shortly after the flood, 
when the sons of Shem won the regions the Canaanites occupied later. Even the patriarch Ham warned the Canaanites against occupying a land allotted to others. The Israelites pass over the Jordan River as a miraculous phenomenon impedes its flow. The Canaanites are caught by surprise and Jericho is surrounded. Its walls fell in another miraculous event, perhaps a quake. The Amorite garrison city of Ai is then taken. Archaeological record demonstrates that both Jericho and Ai were deserted from the beginning of the 15th century BC until the 11th century BC. The kings of Canaan amass all their armies and they outnumber the Israelites by many. A countless multitude of the enemy meet them in the field of battle. At this instant, a gigantic celestial body approached Earth. Earth remains travelling around the sun, but its rotation is stopped in a gravitational gridlock with another huge unknown body of the Joshua Comet group, an object much larger than any comet. Meteorites fall from the sky and rain upon the Canaanites, affecting a mass slaughter. As the enemy is routed, the Israelites believe they do not have enough daylight remaining to clear the land of living enemies. But the sun remains fixed in the sky for several more hours, creating a day well over 24 hours. The prophet Habakkuk described the event of the moon and sun stopping in the sky as God shooting arrows at the earth, meteorites, when appeared in the sky thy glittering spear. The ancient Peruvian empire, according to the historian Montesinos, recorded that the dawn did not rise, that sunrise was delayed by 20 hours. This occurred in the third year of the 15th king of Cusco, the megalithic city in the Andes, the survivors of Tiwanaku, built after the 1687 BC global destruction of the archaic civilization. This king named Tito Yupanqui Pachacuti II. Amazingly, Sitchin, working only with approximates, was 13 years off from the actual date of 1407 BC, using the Peruvian chronologies. This history is made more believable because of the other Peruvian traditions that the people of Cusco were from Tiwanaku, which was destroyed 280 years earlier, covering 15 regnal descents. This means that the 15 kings reigned on average 18.6 years each. A very believable chronology. In When the Sun Darkens, the 1407 BC astronomical near collision is addressed in more depth with citations of many ancient texts and traditions concerning the sun and moon standing still. In the biblical book of Joshua and Numbers, we learn that the surviving Anakim and Rephaim giants fled Canaan and the might of Israel into the land of Philistia. This will prove historically interesting, as the last wave of giants to assault the Israelites centuries later were from among the Philistines, namely Goliath and his sons. Other giants take to ships and escape to some Aegean isles, to Mycenae among the descendants of the Anakim and as far as ancient Albion, known better as the British Isles. In Albion they are called the Fomorians and Firbolgs. Other giants remain in their strongholds in the valley of Rephaim of the giants, which is a territory allotted to the tribe of Dan. But the Danites refuse to make war with them despite efforts of assistance from other tribes. Many Danites built ships and migrated into the Aegean and intermarried among the Achaean as others sailed to Crete and Mycenaean controlled Greece. Dan became a popular seafaring race, as scripture laments, Why does Dan remain in ships? The Danites would become the Danan of the Peloponnese and the Tuatha de Danan of ancient Ireland who finally defeat the giants. Other Danites took ships to the island of Cyprus, which they renamed Ia Dan, Isle of Dan. This reflects the passage in the Book of Psalms. They call their lands after their own names. The conquest of Canaan and their end nationally was precisely 828 years, two cursed earth periods of 414 years, after Canaan and Ham were cursed by Noah for Ham's violating his wife Namar in 2235 BC. Arabic traditions maintain that ever since the sun stilled in Joshua's day so they could slay the giants in Canaan, the regulation of the stars has been confused. It was at this time that the pole shifted to Polaris from where it was formerly pointed at Arctos. Arctos was the Great Bear, the Big Dipper constellation, and Polaris is in the Little Bear. Moses instructed that the lot of inherited lands belonging to Levi be given over to the tribe of Manasseh the son of Joseph, adopted into Israel. 
Joshua obeyed this dictate because the Levites were the priestly tribe who lived spread out among the tribes. The other half of Joseph was the tribe of Ephraim, which also had its allotted territory. Ephraim would be called Joseph many times in the prophetic texts. This is why the rosters of the tribes later in scripture mention the tribes as separate, as Manasseh and Joseph with Ephraim are mentioned hardly at all. This was the year 930, 792 plus 138, since the birth of Shem before the flood in 2337 BC, and 540 years, half of 1080, since Abraham's birth in 1947 BC. It was 400 years after the Abrahamic covenant was confirmed in 1807 BC. As this year of 1407 BC was 2488 Anus Mundi, or 1244 plus 1244 years, we begin the year of Israel calendar. Israel has joined the nations of the world, no longer wandering, and the number 1244 will resurface everywhere in the unfolding history of the Israelites and their descendants. The seal of Israel was the Great Pyramid in Egypt, finished in 2815 BC, 1080 AM, or 1408 years before this 1407 BC date, which counts 1408 years to the first year of the Anno Domini year of the Lord calendar. Further, the patriarch Jacob, renamed Israel, died at age 147, and Israel was born as a nation in 1407 BC. By this time, the tribe of Dan in large groups have set sail for the Aegean, Asia Minor and southern Greece, ancient Peloponnese. 1. Deuteronomy 2. Psalms 3. The Christ Conspiracy 4. Habakkuk 5. The Lost Realms, The Day the Sun Stood Still, Sitchin 6. Judges 7. Return of the Serpents of Wisdom 8. Psalms 9. Tales of the Prophets 1402 BC, 2493 AM In the fifth year after Israel passed over Jordan, the Chittim from Italia crossed over the Mediterranean. A sail of about 20 days straight course and made war against the children of Esau in the 31st year of the reign of King Abianus of Chittim. This is dated in two ways in the Jasher text, both arriving at this date. The Edomites fought against them with a large army but lost to the Chittim and the king of Edom, Hadad, was slain in his 48th year of rule in Seir. And the children of Chittim ruled over Edom, and Edom came under the hand of the children of Chittim, and became one kingdom from that day. It was 178 years earlier when the grandson of Esau, Zepho, became a hero in Italia in 1580 BC. In 1555 BC, 153 years earlier, many people akin to Esau from Edom took up residence in Italia with Zepho. The chronicles in the book of Jasher pay particular attention to the nations of ancient Italy, the Chittim, the ancestors of the Romans as acknowledged by the Jasher copyists. Quote, and the children of Chittim are the Romim who dwell in the valley of Canopia by the river Tibru, Tiber. Unquote. Though Esau had turned evil and an enemy of the Israelites, he too was covered by the promises God gave his father Isaac and Abraham that his seed would produce mighty nations. Through the Edomite assimilation into the Chittim, the seed of Esau would prosper through Israel's greatest enemy, Rome. It is not without coincidence that the ruins at Seir today, called Petra, where the seat of the Edomites had been, are Roman. This ancestral enmity between Israel and Rome will continue throughout history and manifest later in the antipathy between Christian Europe and the Roman Catholic Church. 1. Jasher 1395 BC, 2500 AM King Abianus of Italia, Chittim, died in his 38th year of reign and is succeeded by Latinus II, who would reign 50 years until 1345 BC. By this time, Akinaman has changed his name and religious allegiance to Akinaten, venerating the sun disk as the expression of the deity. Prior to this, he was known as Amenhotep IV, a name venerating the eldest of the Egyptian gods, Amen. His beautiful wife was Queen Nefertiti. In this year, Echinaten moved to his new capital city, Amarna, between Upper and Lower Egypt, having crippled the ancient priesthoods and restructured Egypt's administration. He would reside there until his death by poisoning in 1379 BC. 
By this time, Akinaman has changed his name and religious allegiance to Akhenaten. Archaeologists excavated a library of ancient Canaanite texts known today as the Amarna documents. Pleas from Urusalim, pre-Israelite Jerusalem and other Canaanite cities that were addressed to Pharaoh Amenophis IV, another variant of Amenhotep IV, who had renamed himself Akhenaten. The Amarna tablets indicate that the Saka and the Apuru were invading and these Canaanite kings appealed to Egypt for assistance. The Apuru were the Hebrews, a racial epithet, but the Saka was a dynastic description of the Israelites used by many nations in antiquity. The prophet Amos wrote that Israel would be known by the name of Isaac and the Assyrians and Phonix both referred to the Israelites as Bethsak or Bitsak or House of Isak. This will hold true for many more centuries. The hundreds of requests for Egyptian military assistance were met with silence as Moses first and then Joshua led the Israelites in the conquest of Canaan. An example, quote, Message of Yapahu, ruler of Gezer, your servant. May the king, my lord, the sun from the sky, take thought for his land. Since the Aparu Habiri Hebrews are stronger than we, May the king, my lord, give me his help, and may the king, my lord, get me away from Apiru, lest the Apiru destroy us, unquote. The help never came because Egypt was nation-building, having been destroyed utterly 52 years earlier during the Ten Plagues in 1447 BC. Priorly, the Egyptians ruled over Canaan, and the Canaanite kings, when endangered by the Israelites, pretended that Pharaoh was still ruler over their cities though there had not been an Egyptian presence in decades. With the Hittites pressing from the south, the Israelites from the east and northeast, the Canaanites of the southern cities wanted to be back under Egyptian authority. Scholars have perplexed over the parallelism between Psalm 104 and the hymn of Aten of Akhenaten in Egypt. The Psalms are largely attributed to David. There is no mystery. The Israelites worshipped one God and they obtained this faith from their patriarchs who received it from Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. The Egyptians had obtained their faith from Abraham between 1837 to 1825 BC when he translated the Giza texts. There are hundreds of biblical passages mirrored in Egyptian and other ancient religious writings. The similarities merely denote common origin. The modes of expression differed. At this time, Egypt was in religious chaos. The Ten Plagues and Exodus event was not only traumatising, but caused the Egyptians to question their gods. The temple priesthoods began to vie with one another for the affection of the people. Cults venerating Amen, the eldest known as the Hidden One, others elevating Thoth. But Pharaoh chose a monotheistic view and became Akhenaten placing his capital between the warring factions of Lower and Upper Egypt. His move was popular with the people, but he became an enemy of the cults. A new nationalist religion was taking root that sought answers from Egypt's own past and the veneration of historic personages to the status of gods. This was the Assyrian cult of Isis and Osiris. This was 502 years after Osiris's first regnal year as king of Egypt in 1897 BC, paralleling the 52nd year from the exodus from Egypt. 1. Jasher. 2. Our sun god, Christianity before Christ. 3. Survivors of Atlantis. 4. Tracing our ancestors. 5. Amos. 7. History and quotations. 8. The Christ Conspiracy. 1387 BC, 2508 AM, King Latinus II of Italia, Chittim, invaded Cernania, Spain, and Britannia, Albion, making them tributary to Chittim. This was exactly 1332 years, 666 by 666, before the Romans, Chittim, invaded Britain in 55 BC under Julius Caesar. Anciently, Britain was known as the Tin Islands and they would later fall under Phoenician control, 1 Jesha. 1381 BC, 2514 AM. 
Joshua, the son of Nun, is now 108 years old, and he gives over the rulership of Israel to the elders. This is 792 months after the Exodus, 66 years earlier. The ancient Earth Killer Comet group passes through in a system, apparently far from Earth, one Jesha. 1379 BC, 2516 AM. Joshua, aged 110 years old, died. He had been born in Egypt and was 42 years old at the Exodus in 1447 BC, 82 at the conquest of Canaan he led. This year was a fateful one in Egypt as well. Akhenaten is the victim of a conspiracy by the priesthoods to remove him. He is poisoned by General Horemheb. The Amarna dynasty is overthrown and the city between Upper and Lower Egypt is destroyed. Nationalism has taken root and the old gods are usurped by the new Osirian cult. He had been hated for weakening the cult seated at Karnak, Thebes, Memphis and Sakura by displacing the older Ennead pantheon. At Amarna, he erected the Per Ankh, or House of Life, where new priests were trained in the worship of Aten, a university that omitted the worship of Isis and Osiris. He abolished idolatry, and he married his stepmother, the famous Nefertiti, a former Amorite princess from Mitanni, who had been married to Amenhotep's father. She bore Akhenaten many children, the beautiful Nefertiti's face was preserved on a bust excavated by German archaeologist at Amarna. Akhenaten was no doubt influenced by the Exodus. During his 33-year reign, he ignored the pleas of the Canaanites for military help, ignored the Amorite power and the emerging Hittites. The 377 Amarna tablets reveal the presence of an Iron Age empire in the world. The Hittites first developed military-grade iron weapons, and they were feared for this reason, because iron is superior to bronze and copper armour and weaponry. This is the Late Bronze Age. Prior to the 1447 BC disasters and exodus, the territories of Nubia, Libya and Syria paid tribute to Egypt, but now, after these calamities, the Nubians, Libyans and Syrians did not pay tribute, and Egypt did nothing about it just as they did nothing about the Canaanite pleas. Egypt kept a lid on their true condition and locked down its borders so foreign powers could not discover how ruined the country was. Amarna itself had only been inhabited 15 years before it was destroyed. Egyptologists largely concentrate on the Osirian cult and on Isis when expounding upon things Egyptian, but scholars and archaeologists have long noted that the worship of Osiris and Isis came late in the history of Egypt, and there is a very biblical reason for this. In 1447 BC, the Egyptians blamed the Israelites and their god for the catastrophe that destroyed their country, crops, cities, people and temples. The Egyptian survivors scraped off all of the known and reachable references to the virgin giving birth to the sun, to Set and to Atom Eel, the ancient father-son. The importance of the early Sethite builders of the Giza complex to the Hebrews prompted the later Egyptians to efface all references to Set as a deity rather than as a pre-flood lineage. Set was demonized and Osiris and Isis became the new gods of Egypt. 1. Joshua 2. Murder of Tutankhamun 4. Lost cities and ancient mysteries of Africa and Arabia 5. The Bible is history 7. The origin of Greek civilization 1369 BC, 2526 AM. The Danites were a growing tribe of Israel. In this year they took the Phoenician city of Laish that belonged to Sidon and occupied it because their lot in Israel was too confined. Some believe this marked the beginning of the flight of Dan from Israel, one tracing our ancestors. 1365 BC, 2530 AM. Israel is invaded and occupied by the Babylonians of the Hittite dynasty under King Chushan Rishathaim of Babylon. The Hittite-controlled army razed the Amorite cities, destroyed Mitanni, and removed the Amorite presence throughout Syria. This is the first invasion of Israel in its 42nd year occupying Canaan. The invasion prompted the flight of more Israelites, mainly those of Dan and Zebulun. These people would sail to Crete, to Aegean Islands, to Asia Minor and to early Greece. 
Hittite inscriptions reveal that as early as the 14th century BC, the Helladic kings ruled Pamphylia and Lesbos. As will be shown, scholars attest that the Helladic kings came from Palestine. These people were called Achaeans. 1. Judges. Jasher. 2. The Greek myths. 1357 BC, 2538 AM. This year begins the narrative of the Book of Judges. A national Israelite hero named Othniel organizes resistance against Babylon and succeeds, becoming the first of the judges of the tribes. The land has 40 years of rest from war. This was 50 years, a jubilee period, that Israel occupied Canaan, and 450 years, 50 times 9, since the Abrahamic Covenant was confirmed in 1807 BC. It was also 520 years, 52 times 10, after the Abrahamic Covenant was instituted. 90 years after Exodus in 1447 BC was 1080 months. 1. Judges 1351 BC, 2544 AM. The new capital city of Yin of the Shang dynasty was built in the reign of the fifth king, Tai Geng. This was also referred to as the Tang dynasty. This means that in the preceding 96 years since 1447 BC, when the mandate of heaven caused a dynastic change, there ruled four other Shang kings. It was at this site, later called Anyang, that Chinese archaeologists would find tens of thousands of archaic Chinese texts on turtle shells and bones concerning these kings and the devastation that led to the emergence of their dynasty in 1447 BC. This date in history has dynastic related calendrics. It is 864 times 4 before Armageddon in 2106 AD, or 3456 years when the chief cornerstone will begin his millennial dynasty. It was 2688 years, 1344 plus 1344, since the planet entered its present orbit, the Anunnaki year of 1344, being when man was banished from Eden in 3895 BC. This was the year 2022 of the Olmec calendar, a people in the Americas related to the Chinese. 1488 of the Anunnaki dynasty is 744 plus 744, a golden proportion number like 864, and also like 888, the number of years after the flood the Yin was built. This year was a very important one in Chinese history, one in Eden. 1345 BC. King Latinus II of Italia, Chittim, died in his 50th year of rule. This ends the chronologically arranged ancient Hebrew Book of Jasher which covered 2550 years of history from 3895 to 1345 BC, or 51 jubilees. Latinus II is the last known ruler of Italia until after the Trojan War, 1229 BC, where we will soon find that the name Latinus had become a distinctive dynastic title in ancient Italy. 24 years after the Danites invaded and occupied a part of Phoenicia, a massive fleet of Danites with other Israelites crossed via Crete into the Peloponnese, joining their Danan kin, already living in the country. Thebes was destroyed, as was Argos. The Danan forced the local populace and Argives to coexist with them. Thebes had originally been occupied at this time by Canaanites, who escaped the earlier Israelite invasion in 1407 BC. Now Phoenician would rule Thebes, the city of seven gates, named after the Egyptian city of Thebes. Athens was invaded and the Danan burnt down the Temple of Apollo. Israel, Phoenicia and Cyprus, Iadan, emerged together at this time as a unified people, Iadan being the island gateway to the Aegean. The Danite fleet sailed up the coast of Asia Minor and founded mercantile bases at such places that would be called Ephesus and Miletus. The locals called the people by the name of the gods they worshipped. They quickly learned that these strangers worshipped a god called Yah and that they also venerated a cow goddess that was depicted as a dragon sphinx. This Yah they designated in Asia Minor as Eor, which they gave an Egyptian origin to as Hathor, the cow goddess, not realising that these people, Danites, had lived in Goshen in Egypt for two ten years, virtually at the feet of the sphinx at Giza. 
The famous Ionians were none other than the Danites of Israel. This date was 1224 months after the Exodus, 102 years. The sum 1224 being half of 2448, the Annus Mundi year of 1447 BC, when the Israelites escaped Egypt. It was also 414 years, a cursed earth period, to the civil war in Israel that would rift into two kingdoms, Israel and Judah in 931 BC. This was also 864 years before the Greeks descended from Japheth and Israel, defeated the Persians in 481 BC. Also, this was 600 years before the other 10 tribes of Israel were forcibly deported to the east and northeast by the Assyrians in 745 BC. On the eastern side of the Aegean, the Ionians, the Danan, were associated with the Sphinx. But on the western side, where Greece and Mycenae lay, the newcomers were associated with the Great Pyramid, Seal of Israel. In this year, Argos was destroyed and Mycenae overrun by the Danan. The Danan built a small-scale replica of the Great Pyramid in Argos. Long ago, the Greek traveller Pausanias wrote about this small pyramid built of large blocks five feet long. Scholars had dismissed this account until in 1936 and 37 AD. The pyramids of Argolis had been discovered and excavated. A second pyramid at the foot of the Arachneus Mountains, a mile and a half away. With base sides at about 44 feet and a height of 33 feet, we see the intent to copy the proportions of the Great Pyramid. The proof they are replicas of the Giza monuments is found in that the pyramids of Argolis have apex stones. Historians make it clear that the Argives began vanishing as the Argives emerged. This is the beginning period of Israelite presence in Europe, a heritage shown in that the earliest chroniclers in history claim that Europe was named after a Phoenician princess who had been abducted. This is exactly what happened. The Israelites assimilated with the Phoenicians early on, taking their cities and ports and using them in their exodus from Palestine into the European world. 1. Jesha. 2. The Origin of Greek Civilization. 3. Augustine, City of God, Book 18. 4. Return of the Serpents of Wisdom. 5. Odyssey of Gods. 6. Life as we know it. 1332 BC, 2563 AM. The restoration stealer of King Tutankhamun at Karnak describes Egypt during the time of his predecessor Akhenaten. Quote, the temples of the gods and goddesses from Aswan to the Delta swamps had fallen into ruin. Their sanctuaries were decayed, become as heaps of rubble overgrown with weeds. Their shrines were like what does not exist. Their mansions were a footpath. The land was in calamity and the gods turned away from this land. If an army was sent to Jahi, Palestine, to extend the borders of Egypt, no success could happen for them, unquote. This lamentation describes Egypt's total ruin from the Ten Plagues disasters in 1447 BC. The heretic king Akhenaten was later blamed after the fact of his rule for this earlier devastation, as Egyptian chroniclers focused on him rather than Israel and the Exodus event. This reference to Palestine is revealing, for Egypt was surrounded by enemies and places they could extend their territory. Here we have an inadvertent admission that in Palestine was a people who did not allow Egypt to extend their borders. This is evident in the Canaanite Amarna documents and the fact that Nubia, Libya and Syria all quit providing Egypt tribute. This ancient Egyptian text is dated exactly 680 years after Ham, Chem Anam Mena Menes, began his rule after the flood in 2012 BC. 680 years being 244,800 days, 2448. This paralleling the year 2448, 1447 BC, when Egypt was ruined. 1. History and Quotations 1317 BC, 2578 AM King Eglon of Moab organised an alliance between Moab and Ammon against Israel. They are joined in the alliance by the Amalekites. At the death of the judge Othniel, the allied armies invade Israel, forcing them to pay tribute for 18 years. This is 48 years, 576 months, golden proportion number, after the Hittite dynasty of Babylon invaded Israel in 1365 BC, this being the second time Israel as a nation was attacked. 
This year was 630 years, 70 times 9 after Abraham was born. The patriarch of Israel and kin to Lot, who was patriarch of Moab and Ammon. This was also 560 years, 70 times 8, after the Abrahamic covenant was instituted, and 490 years, 70 times 7, after it was confirmed in 1807 BC. As this was the 90th year that Israel was a nation, this is 1080 months. One judges. 1300 BC, 2595 AM. This is an approximate date for when Chinese astronomers recorded the appearance of a new star. 1299 BC, 2596 AM. A left-handed Benjamite of Israel named Ehud entered the Moabite court of King Eglon, who was extraordinarily fat. Ehud pretended to have a secret message for the king, who then dismissed his guards to the outer hall. Leaning toward him, Ehud withdrew a dagger and buried it in between King Eglon's fat folds, killing him. Exiting the hall, the guards were deterred from re-entering the chamber. After Ehud told them the king was sleeping, Ehud made his escape after assassinating the king of Moab, delivering Israel after 18 years of Moabite oppression. This was a great year after the Babel dispersion in 1899 BC, or 600 years. This was 148 years, or 1776 months, after Israel escaped Egypt, and this was the 108th year of Israel. 1297 BC, 2598 AM Because the Israelites failed to fulfill their obligation to overrun all of Canaan, there were still many cities of the Canaanites. In this year, a combined army under Sisera forced Israel to pay tribute for 20 years. This Canaanite oppression was 490 years, 70 by 7, after the birth of Jacob. This was the third time Israel was invaded and defeated since becoming a nation, exactly 68 years after the first invasion by the Hittite-controlled Babylonians. 68 years is 24,480 days, 2448. This Canaanite invasion was 552 years before the Assyrians would invade in 745 BC and deport the ten tribes of Israel. The Canaanite invasion raises an important point. Israel had just conquered Canaan and Bashan 110 years earlier, and in that time they no doubt multiplied in numbers. That the Canaanites raised armies and in turn overpowered Israel reveals that the Israelite population had stagnated because of a continual decrease in numbers. As we will see, the Israelites were migrating in groups throughout the Mediterranean, the Aegean Isles and coast of Asia Minor and the Peloponnese. Israel was growing so rapidly the land could not sustain them. 1290 BC, 2605 AM this is the final year of Pharaoh Seti II reigning alone, for in this year he begins the co-rulership with his son, who assumes the title Ramesses II, who oppressed the Israelites. By this time Seti I had subdued Phoenicia, which at this time was brimming with Israelites. The Egyptian presence would have instigated a new wave of immigration from the coast of Phoenicia and Israel to Crete and the Aegean. In an inscription of Seti I and Ramesses II, we discover references to Asher in Palestine, one of the Israelite tribes. Emmanuel Velikovsky exhibits Egyptian texts that reveal that Palestine was occupied by a white, North Semitic population. The emergence of the boy pharaoh Ramesses II initiated a 19-year-long war with the Hittites of Anatolia, one Phoenicians. Two Ages in Chaos, Volume 1. 1279 BC, 2616 AM. It is unknown what occurred in this year, but the calendrics are incredible. The major numbers are all Anunnaki related. 792 by 5 of Anunnaki chronology, 3960. 552 times 5 orbital chronology, 2760. When Anunnaki aided in restoration of Earth, and created mankind in 4039 BC. This was 2160 years, 432 times 5, since the Anunnaki descended to earth at Passover of Nibiru in 3439 BC. It is futile to speculate beyond this. 1277 BC, 2618 AM. The Israelites led by the woman Deborah and warrior Barak battled the Canaanite army of Sisera after 20 years of paying tribute. 
At the sight of the enormous Canaanite army with their iron chariots, the Israelites nearly fled had not the prophetess Deborah intervened. Josephus relates that a strange storm of mighty winds, hailstones and rain went hard against the Canaanites, but aided the Israelites in battle. Believing God assisted them, the Israelites routed the Canaanites and Sisera escaped to a Kenite woman's tent. While he slept, she ran a tent nail through his head, killing him, fulfilling the prophecy that Sisera would be killed by a woman. This ended the 20 years of tribute. This was 670 years after the birth of Abraham in 1947 BC and 622 after the Babel dispersion. 622 being half of 1244, a number serving as a signature of Israel throughout history. It is half of 2488, the Annus Mundi year when Israel conquered Canaan in 1407 BC. 1 Judges. 2 Antiquities. 1275 BC, 2620 AM. The newly emerging Egyptian empire under Ramesses II seeks to crush the Hittite dynasty seated at Babylon. Ramesses II marches out and interestingly passes by Israel. No doubt the Egyptians recalled the disastrous history between they and the Israelites, and they had probably received intelligence concerning the defeat of Sisera and the Canaanites. On his way to Babylon, Ramesses II is opposed by the Hittites and their vassal armies in the Battle of Kadesh, where Ramesses II is defeated badly, his own army fleeing and leaving him alone. The Battle of Kadesh, Holy City, is depicted upon the walls of the Ramesseum near Thebes and the temples of Luxor, Karnak, Abdos and Abu Simbel. The war resulted with a curious alliance. The Egypto-Hittite Treaty was a mutual protection alliance prominently displayed at Thebes in Luxor and at Hattusus in Anatolia concerning a growing power in the Mediterranean Sea that threatened both Hittite and Egyptian security, known to historians as the Sea People Federation, who are specifically mentioned in the treaty. This emerging power was spread throughout the Mediterranean and Aegean, and would lead to the famous Trojan War. This emerging power arose virtually overnight because the coastal cities of the ancient world were receiving fleets of immigrants from the rapidly multiplying families of Israel. This will be shown. Ramesses II's invasion and Battle of Kadesh was exactly 666 years before 609 BC, when Pharaoh Necho marched out against the king of Babylon, only to be crushed. In the treaty with the Hittites, we find mentioned a place called Dan, with references to a goddess of Dan. In Phoenicia, who is called Asherah and Ashtoreth in the Old Testament texts, the Danites continued the worship of Baal and Asnara, as seen in the Old Testament, and they took this worship with them. In ancient Ireland, they were the Tuatha de Danann, people of the goddess Danu, they who brought Beltine to Ireland. Assyria is a major concern of the Hittites at this time. 1. History in Quotations 2. Ages in Chaos, Volume 2 3. Survivors of Atlantis 4. Ages in Chaos 1273 BC, 2622 AM. Planet Phoenix passes through the inner solar system and Assyria drives out the Hittites from Babylonia. Babylon is annexed as are other Near East cities as Assyria emerges as a new empire. Interestingly, Assyria adopts the winged disc as its official seal, a much older symbol representing the Phoenix. This is 666 years before the defeat of Assyria by Babylon in 607 BC. This is 552 years before the Assyrians will invade Israel and deport the ten tribes into the northeast and far east. 1271 BC, 2624 AM. The Indo-European Hittite Egyptian Treaty, mentioned in 1275 BC, is dated in this year 1271 BC. The Hittites defeated the Egyptians but then allied with them rather than conquered because of the Assyrians to the east and the Sea Peoples Federation on the seas. Egypt in this year takes the offensive against the Sea Peoples Federation by invading and attacking the Philistine cities of Gaza and Ascalon. The news of the Egyptian takeover of the Federation ports in Philistia plants the seeds up to a major international maritime war that will erupt known as the Trojan War. 1. A History of Civilization, Volume 1. 2. Ages in Chaos, Volume 2. 
1255 BC, 2640 AM. The ancient kingdom of Argos came to an end, originally founded by the sons of Noah and Namar called the Anakim, a race of enormous people called giants in the Old Testament records. The local population was called Argives, but the new dynasty was Mycenaean. The Argives assimilated waves of Achaeans from Palestine, escaping Canaanites, and now the new Mycenae dynasty was founded, being that of the Danaan. These came from the Danaan and Achaean settlements and ports along the Phoenician coast. These were a patriarchal people who challenged the triple goddess of the locals, overrunning her shrines and annulling the ancient Medusan calendar by replacing it with another. It was these people from the Canaanite coast that brought to Mycenae a seven-day weekly calendar. These invaders were herdsmen and the early Greeks claimed that it was these people from Palestine that brought agriculture to the Peloponnese. The occupation of the Peloponnese by the Israelite Danaan was not an oppressive one. Outsiders and locals were allowed to marry into the Danaan families, to take Danaanite wives and then be known as Danaanites themselves. This practice was an ancient Israelite institution, commonly accepting strangers into their population. Assimilation is a trait of Israel all the way through history to the founding and longevity of the United States of America in 1776 AD. Augustine mentions the beginning of the Mycenae dynasty in Varro's chronology as occurring during the rulership of Deborah over Israel. The calendrics for this year indicate the rise of a new dynasty. This was 1584 years, 792 plus 792, after the start of the pre-flight Anunnaki dynasty in 2839 BC. Further, this was 552 years after the Abrahamic covenant was confirmed in 1807 BC. The covenant being that the descendants of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob would fill the earth and bless the nations of the world. What was occurring at this time was essentially an Israelite renaissance throughout the Aegean and its coasts. 1. The Greek Myths 6. Augustine City of God, Book 18 1250 BC, 2645 AM. This is an approximate date for a reference Hesiod made in Theogony concerning the Etruscans who he called the far-famed Tyrsinoi. This is a reference to the Phoenicians, for the capital of the Canaanite city was Tyre, and they were indeed far-famed. By this time the Phoenicians were assimilating with the Israelites. The Etruscans were noted for their artwork, religion and script in early Italy. 1. Survivors of Atlantis 1247 BC, 2648 AM After orbiting beyond the inner solar system for 286 years, the Sodom-Trojan Apocalypse Comet Group returns and begins passing through the inner system within close proximity to Earth in a three-year detritus reign. 1244 BC, 2651 AM In this year occurred the first overseas Israelite civil war, known as the Seven Against Thebes. 120 years earlier, the Israelite Danan flooded into the Aegean and took the city that they renamed Thebes. To the ancient post-Exodus Israelites, the name Thebes invoked respect and authority as the capital of Upper Egypt. Thebes was founded by a Phoenician called Cadmus, according to Herodotus, about 1350 BC. But this description was given to any Semitic seafarer in antiquity, the Greek alphabet came to Thebes by way of Phoenicia. This account was considered mythical until in 964 AD, archaeologists at Thebes discovered in the Cadmion Temple roll cylinders with ancient cuneiform signs, the first cuneiform text ever found on Greek soil. One of the seals was dated at about 1367 to 1346 BC, the exact time the Danites were moving in waves into the area. Cadmus is a Semitic word meaning eastern and Thebes was the capital of Boeotia. Robert Graves wrote that the Boeotians were a Semitic tribe that had earlier moved from the Syrian plains up north to Cadmia in Caria before crossing over the Aegean to seize Thebes. Cadmus was allowed to marry Harmonia only after eight years, a probationary period imposed by the locals. The name Harmonia is suspect a name reminding us of Mount Harmon in Israel. When Cadmus arrived in Boeotia, he fought against the Pelasgians. The Spartans were related to the Thebans and Cadmus, and this we find intriguing. 
Later, it will be found that the Spartans, called Lacedaemonians in antiquity, were related to the Jews who were descended from Judah. This connection is further seen in that Thebes had as its emblem the lion, as in lion of the tribe of Judah. The Spartans in early stories were said to be born from serpent's teeth. The explanation is simple. Cadmus had a battle when he first landed, and many of his men were killed, but this was merely the expeditionary force with other fleets on the way. When the locals saw his losses immediately replenished with fresh and newer faces, a people with a battle standard of a serpent, the locals claimed that the soldiers were born from serpent's teeth. The Spartans even later wore a serpent badge. In fact, all the people of Cadmus had a serpent mark on their bodies by which they would know each other. Anthropologists and historians have found throughout the Mediterranean, Aegean, Atlantic, European and old Mesoamerican coasts. It was long known that the first primeval seafaring race were identified by the serpent, a people that became rulers and civilizers everywhere. This was the Israelite tribe of Dan, a name that means judge and ruler, and of whom the scriptures reads that they remained in ships. The prophecy concerning Dan was that he would be a serpent by the way. Even Graves notes that the Theban customs reflect biblical customs of the priests at Jerusalem. In 1244 BC, a change of kings occurred in Thebes, now a strong Israelite kingdom and member of the Sea People's Federation. No other cities of ancient Greece were members of this powerful league of Mediterranean traders. Mycenae of the Danaan, who arrived much later than those that settled Canaan, who were originally those that separated from Israel centuries earlier, sought to influence the Theban dynasty. The population of Mycenae was of Argives, Archaeans and Danaan, who were on their way to becoming one people. Thebes, like later Sparta, were isolationists and not in the habit of assimilation on a grand scale. When the Thebans chose a king not of the Mycenae dynasty's liking, the Theban War began, a short conflict known as the Seven against Thebes. Mycenae led seven armies of combined cities against the city of seven gates, despite the appearance of omens and unfavourable signs in the heavens, a comet. The Thebans beat the attackers off in an embarrassing battle that was a main source of ridicule in the later Trojan War that would start five years later. That the Thebans were descendants of the Israelites is seen in the Calendrics. 1244 BC is half of 1288, the Anus Mundi year when the Israelites conquered the Canaanites in 1407 BC, Israel being badly outnumbered. In this year, the Sodom Trojan Apocalypse Comet Group passed through inner solar system, and a comet was recorded in the annals of King Shalmaneser I as occurring in this year during a battle between the Assyrians and the Hittites. The suffix Asar means king, indicating that this Assyrian regent was called Shalman the king. Later, the Israelites would confuse his name for King Jedidiah, the one later known as Solomon the king. 1. Ages in Chaos, Volume 2. 2. A History of Civilization, Volume 1. 3. The Greek Myths. 10. Survivors of Atlantis. 13. Ilia, Book 4. 14. The Destruction of Atlantis. 15. The Gospel Truth. 1239 BC, 2656 AM. In the 1000th year after the Great Flood and 4000th year of the Anunnaki chronology, the most widespread world war to afflict the nations occurred when King Agamemnon of Mycenae passed over the Aegean Sea with his armies of Achaeans, Argives and Danoi, Danan. This began the 10-year-long Trojan War. Troy was not at first a prime objective. The pre-Greek forces first sacked and destroyed the coastal cities of Asia Minor and assaulted Ilion, the Trojan state. Troy was a member of the Sea People's Federation and had control of the Black Sea trade of gold, silver, iron, cinnabar, timber for ships, linen, hemp, dried fish, oil and Chinese jade. The rising new Israelite-descended Mycenaean dynasty wanted free access to the Black Sea without Trojan naval blocking, but King Priam of Troy denied this and the states of Asia Minor allied with Troy. The pretext for war is said to be the abduction of Helen, Queen of Sparta. According to Josephus in Antiquities, the Jews regarded the Spartans, called Lacedaemonians, as kin. In fact, the seal of Sparta was the same as the Israelite tribe of Dan. 
an eagle with a serpent in its talons. Scholars assert that the Mycenaeans and Spartans were blood-related. The root of the Trojan War lay in the fact that for over a hundred years the Israelites, mostly of Dan and Zebulun, populated the coastal cities of the Aegean, Asia Minor south of Ilium and west of the sea. The Danaan filled the cities of Athens, Corinth, Thebes, Argos, Mycenae and Sparta, the whole Peloponnese. The Danite royalty became the royalty of ancient Greekdom. The local Gracoi, Achaeans and Argives were under the power of the newly empowered Israelite dynasties and when the Spartan queen was kidnapped, the houses of the Danaan allied under the Israelite Mycenaean king, Agamemnon, whose name derives straight out of Egypt as does the names Abdos and Thebes. The story is preserved in Homer's Iliad, where the Danaan are mentioned exactly 147 times. The name Homer derives from the Semitic Omer, or the name Emma, and the 147 may be a hint as to the origin of the Danaan, for Jacob Israel was 147 years old at his death. Ancient texts are full of such codes. The Hittite records name the Achaeans as the Ahiyawa, and Troy is found as Willusa. To the Greeks, Troy was Ilios. Amazingly, a 13th century BC Hittite text reveals that there was a great controversy between the Hittites and Mycenaeans over Troy. For Mycenae to oppose the powerful Hittites reveals that the new Israelite descended dynasties were indeed powerful. In Mycenaean records, we find that the heroes of Trojan war fame were considered mythological as the names of men in Mycenaean tablets. The Hittite records relate that initially the Hittites and Achaeans were maintaining good relations. Recall also that Mycenae was priorly Argos, built by the sons of Noah called the Anak, giants. This name is passed down in the form of Wanax, a popular title for Mycenaean leaders at this time. King Priam of Troy inherited the policy of his predecessor, King Laomdion, who implemented a blockade and monopoly on all Black Sea trade. With the hostility between Mycenae and Thebes, we are not surprised to learn that the Thebans took no part in the Trojan War. The Trojan War was the Israelite contest against the Sea People Federation for control of the Hellespont. After a seven-year interregnum period in Kassite dynasty Babylon, King Enlil Nadin Shumi ascended to the throne, his reign ending in this year, beginning a 70-year countdown to the end of the Kassite dynasty of Babylon in 1159 BC in final year of King Enlil Nadin Ahi, the only two Kassite regents with this name in a 27-king dynasty spanning 400 years. 1. Iliad Book 1. 2. The Greek Myths. 3. Ancient Mysteries. 4. Josephus Antiquities. 5. Post-Captivity Names of Israel 6. The Oxford Illustrated Guide 7. Tracing Our Ancestors 8. Ancient Mysteries 9. The Origins of Greek Civilization 11. The Greek Myths 1237 BC, 2658 AM After 40 years rest from war, Israel is invaded by the Midianites and forced to pay tribute for seven years. In this, the second year of the Trojan War, the Sea People's Federation begins to enter the conflict in defence of Ilium and Troy. An ally of the Trojans, led by Memnon, not to be confused with Agamemnon of Mycenae, attacked the Mycenaean fleet and then landed an army on the Anatolian coast, 10,000 men. These people were from the coast of northwestern Africa, where the Phoenicians had begun colonies, many of these no doubt peopled by Israelites. Memnon's father was a member of the royal house of Troy, and his army of 10,000 was called the Memnonides. They marched across the Lydian frontier to relieve Ilios and found themselves opposed by an army of Solimi, who were allied to the Danaan, the Achaeans who were originally from Canaan. In the battle, the Memnonides slaughtered the Solimi, who had marched overland in this great war. The story is related in the Little Iliad by Quintus of Smyrna. Many scholars assert that the Solimi were from ancient Jerusalem. In the Old Testament, the Hittites founded the city of Jerusalem, a branch of the Hittite family called Solimi. In the archaic Ebla tablet, Jerusalem appears as Uru Salima, or as old cuneiform records render it, Ur Salem. This year was 210 years, 70 times 3, after Israel escaped Egypt in the Exodus. At this time, Jerusalem was not a part of Israel. 
but still under Hittite and Canaanite rule. The Israelites never did fulfil their conquest of the land. One, Judges. Two, survivors of Atlantis. Three, Numbers. Four, the Christ Conspiracy. Five, lost language of symbolism. Two. 1232 BC, 2663 AM. After 15 years orbiting over the ecliptic in the inner solar system, the Sodom Trojan Apocalypse Comet Group begins descending back over the ecliptic in a three-year-long train, completing its 301-year orbit. This was the seventh year of the Trojan War, and according to Homer, a plague afflicted the Achaeans under Agamemnon. 1. Iliad Book 1 1231 BC, 2664 AM. An Israelite named Gideon is inspired to deliver the Israelites out of the hand of the Midianites. He selects 300 men and with a ruse of trumpets and divine favour, Gideon routs the Midianites and then subdues them. Israel enters into another 40 years of rest from war. This deliverance is 216 years, 108 times 2, after the Exodus and 324 years, 108 times 3, after 1555 BC, when the Israelites defeated an army that invaded Egypt with Midianites in its ranks. 1230 BC, 2665 AM. According to Justin, who relied upon earlier chronologies, the island of Tyre, New Tyre, was founded one year after the fall of Troy, one Phoenicians. 1229 BC, 2666 AM. After 10 years of war, King Agamemnon launched the fateful naval invasion, resulting in the fall of Troy. Mycenae demanded access to the Black Sea because of several ports of Japhetic peoples who exported goods through the filter of the Sea People's Federation. They wanted access to the Hellespont but were denied by Troy. Robert Graves in his epic work The Greek Myths revealed that the Trojans were members of the Sea People's Federation, called the Keftiu. He also remarked that it was not the face of Helen that launched a thousand ships but mercantile interest. The entire sequence of the Iliad deals only with the tenth and final year of the war. In this year, the Mycenaeans assembled a mighty invasion force of 60,000 Mycenaeans, called Danaan and Achaeans, Argives and Spartans, Lacedaemonians. The total Danaan fleet that carried this host was 1186 ships, this making each vessel carry about 50 men. The 60,000 were gathered from the cities of Mycenae, Boeotia of the Phocians, Locrians, Euboea of Abantes from Athens, Salamis, Salamai, Argos, Tyrans, Corinth, Sparta, Thrace, Arcadia, Thoas, the Aeotians, Knossos in Crete, the Rhodians, the Hellenes among others. This was a naval invasion for maritime supremacy of the Aegean, the Ionian Sea, the Hellespont and Black Sea trade, and the whole Mediterranean. The Israelitish dynasties had been firmly planted throughout the ancient country we know of as Greece, and for a couple of centuries the local populace had begun assimilating with those foreign benefactors that had raised their living standards and brought security to a realm where warring tribes had dwelt before. The very inception of what we call Greek was the amalgamation and merging of Semitic Israelite descendants with indigenous Indo-European peoples of Japhetic stock. The Theban War, or Seven Against Thebes and the Trojan War, only a few years apart, are the very beginning of Greek history. And this even perplexed minds such as Diodorus Siculus in the 1st century BC. As will be shown in this research, the new covenant we call Christianity was written in Greek and the original seven churches were all in Asia Minor for the apostles wrote that the lost sheep of the house of Israel were located there and the gospel was taken into Europe first. Because of this amazing merging of the Israelite Japhetic peoples, the Greeks were adopted into the Abrahamic covenant, and all those peoples of the world today descended from them. The Trojan War was not over Helen, but the Hellespont, and the ancient peoples that became what we call Greeks were after the Trojan War centuries later called Hellenes. This will be made more clear in the next century's dates. King Priam of Troy had as his allies the Pelasgians of Larissa, Thracians from all along the Hellespont, Paeonians from distant Amidon, Paphlagonians, Mycians, Phrygians from Anatolia, as well as the Carians, 
who maintain traditions about the Anakim giants. The warriors of Lycia and Miletus and other allies of tongues are known to the Greeks. The nations of Phrygia, Lycia and Caria were heavily garrisoned with Hittite troops as buffer states between them and Mycenae. This was an international war, but not one the Hittites actively took part in. They were an empire in decline and had other enemies to worry about. Herodotus dated the Trojan War at approximately 1250 BC, only 21 years variance, and the Parian Chronicle of the 3rd century BC dated the war at 1209 BC. The invasion against Troy was dated at 1237 BC by Frank Joseph. This is only eight years off. The calendrics for this year further relate to Israel. This was 136 years after the Danites fled Palestine and entered the Aegean as the Danan in 1365 BC, this being 48,960 days, or 24,480 days twice over. This was 216 years, 108 times 2, after 1445 BC, when the Israelites were cursed to Rome for 38 more years for not conquering the allotted territories. This was the 648th year of the Abrahamic Covenant. This was 42 years, 504 months being 252 times 2, after Egypt took the offensive against the Sea People's Federation and attacked and occupied Philistine cities in 1271 BC. It was during this year, 1229 BC, according to Frank Joseph, that a massive invasion of the Sea People's Federation attacked Egypt taking their ships of the Delta and Nile as their Libyan allies simultaneously conducted a land invasion in the Battle of Piari, dated also in 1229 BC by Robert Graves. The Great Battle for Troy began with a series of one-on-one -on -one challenges between warriors, the Bronze Age institution known as the Heroic Code. This practice was adopted by the Israelites early on and would be encountered in 1135 BC, 1027 BC and other dates. At this time, the Sodom Trojan Apocalypse Comet Group passes extremely close to Earth, and a plasma storm erupts the entire sky with brilliant lightning. Cometary detritus rains upon Asia Minor and ancient Greece. All of Anatolia, modern Turkey, and citadels throughout the Hittite regions are melted like glass, vitrified. The Hittites suffered a cataclysm of quakes and strange storms, and this unusual astronomical activity did not escape unnoticed in Homer's Iliad. A comet with a long tail was seen over Troy, said by Homer to be a sign from God. During the daytime at noon, with the sun shining brightly, the sky erupted with lightning bolts that hit the earth, one bolt hitting the army of the Danan right in front of the walls of Troy, striking two different areas of the battlefield. During the fighting, it rained blood, a phenomenon that has happened several times in history and is fully explained in Anunnaki homeworld. As the fighting continued, a destructive earthquake occurred and the sun set too early. The Homeric account is consistent with what archaeologists assert. It is believed that Troy VI of Iliad fame was the biggest city, dating to about 1250 BC, and that it ended by earthquake. Diodorus wrote that a destructive earthquake afflicted the entire North African shoreline of the Mediterranean, casting entire coastal cities into the sea. A fact now confirmed by geologists. Diodorus' dating was approximately 1250 BC. This is the final year of the kingdom of Hatti. The Hittites would never be heard of again. The survivors of the disaster were themselves overcome by a human wave of the Sea People's Federation, coming from the Baltic and Black Sea regions. The Egyptians associated the thunderbolts from the skies and ruin of Hatti as caused by the Sea Peoples. In an inscription of Pharaoh Ramesses III, we read concerning the Sea Peoples, quote, No country, not even the Hatti, was able to withstand their powerful weapons, unquote. These weapons refer to the flux tube blasts from space passing between a large object in space and the Earth's magnetosphere. The vitrified ruins can still be seen today in Turkey. King Superliluma II was killed in a battle with the Sea People. Archaeologists assert that the period of 1200 to 750 BC in Anatolia, Turkey, lies in complete darkness. Velikovsky wrote that the area contains no relics of art or industry, 
no remains of human culture or even habitation for a full span of 450 years. Both Oswald Spengler and Frank Joseph wrote that this period was also a dark age for Anatolia, for China and India. Joseph goes further and declares it was a dark age for Greece as well. The disasters were probably global. When the Greeks returned from their victory over Ilium and Troy, they found their own cities and people crushed by natural disasters and calamities, according to Augustine. This began the Greek Dark Age, even before there was technically a place called Greece. The Hellenic culture which emerged afterward, after the fall of Mycenae, deliberately reverted back to wood as building material in a land rich in stone. The road and water systems of the Mycenaean times fell into disrepair and ruin during the following Hellenic period. The Danaan vanish from the histories of the Greek world for two reasons. They were absorbed by the local populace, and survivors regrouped and migrated away into north and northwestern Europe. The path they tread in migration is easily found in the names they bestowed to landmarks and cities, rivers and countries like Danube, Danzig, Dnieper, Denmark and Donsk, to name a few. Historians claim that the evidence shows that the population of Mycenae broke into small groups and spread themselves into the local Greek populations. Even Thebes was destroyed, burned. The last layer of material where ancient seals were found was burned approximately 1200 BC. After Troy was destroyed, the survivors under their leader Aeneas sailed to Italia and took refuge in the kingdom of Latium. Roman historian Marcus Varro related that at that time the kings of Latium were called Latinus. This is confirmed in the Hebrew book of Jasher, which relates that in 1345 BC, Latinus too died, ending the chronologically arranged history of the ancient world. In Book 7 of Virgil's Aeneid, 29-19 BC, we also find mention that the king of Italia was Latinus and that he had a daughter named Lavinia. The story of Aeneas' landing in Italia is preserved in the Old British Chronicles as related by the 5th century AD scholar Gilgas Albanius Nennius of the 9th century AD and Geoffrey of Monmouth, about 1150 AD. Aeneas landed and was honourably received by King Latinus, which provoked King Turnus of the Rutili to wrath. Turnus made war against Latinus, but was defeated by Aeneas, who obtained the kingdom of Latinum and was married to Lavinia. Turnus, too, seems to be a dynastic name. For 355 years earlier, in 1584 BC, a king named Turnus is found in the Jasher records. Augustine wrote that Aeneas landed in Italia right after the Trojan War, in the rulership of Abdon the Judge over Israel. The calendrics for this year link the Trojans with their descendants as well as with the people who defeated them. 1229 BC fall of Troy was 670 years after the Babel dispersion in 1899 BC. The year was 476 years before the founding of Rome in 753 BC, the fall of Troy being 1229 BC. But the Roman civilization would last through the period of the Seven Kings, the Republic and then the Empire for exactly 1229 years to the year 476 AD when Rome would be defeated by the Ten Kingdoms of Europe, the Germans and descendants of the Ten Tribes of Israel that were deported from Israel in 745 BC. The identity of the post-exilic Israelites will be thoroughly revealed. Rome gloried in its Trojan ancestry. By the time Rome would emerge, the people would be an admixture of Indo-European Latins, Sabines, Trojans and Edomites from Esau's line. Israelite descended dynasties brought about the fall of Troy and they would later bring about the fall of Rome. 1. The Greek Myths 5. Iliad Book 2 7. History and Quotations 9. Survivors of Atlantis 11. The Greek Myths 17. Odyssey of the Gods 18. Survivors of Atlantis 19. Jürgen Huthman, Ezekiel's Temple in Turkey, Legendary Times 20. Ages in Chaos, Volume 2 22. Decline of the West 23. Augustine, City of God 26. Tracing Our Ancestors 27. The Origins of Greek Civilization 28. A History of Civilization 30. The Oxford Illustrated Guide 1225 BC, 2670 AM 
The Assyrians under King Tukulti Ninurta defeated the Kassites and took Babylon. This was 48 years after the Assyrians first annexed Babylon in 1273 BC. This begins a 66 year, 792 month countdown to the ultimate fall of the Kassite dynasty of Babylon in 1159 BC. Kassites were constantly rebellious against Assyrian authority. 1. The Oxford Illustrated Guide. 1223 BC, 2672 AM. Ramesses II of Egypt died, having ruled from boyhood for 67 years. His body was studied in 1979 AD, autopsied when his mummy was in Paris. He had red hair. His son, Mernetar, begins to rule. In a unique parallel, this was the year 2448 of the Jewish calendar, or 1447 BC, when Ramesses I died in the Red Sea at the exodus of Israel. 1. Historical deception. 2. The God Kings of Outremer. 3. Ancient Mysteries. 1218 BC, 2677 AM. The famous Stele of Menepta was written in year 5 of his reign. The text refers to the status quo he inherited from invasion by his grandfather Seti I and his father Ramesses II, that the Hittites, Canaanites, Philistines, Libyans and Israelites were subdued. On the opposite side of the Stele is a text by his predecessor Amenhotep III. The Stele was discovered in 1896 AD. This was merely state propaganda. The coasts were indeed attacked from Troy down Asia Minor to Ugarit, Phoenicia, Israel, Canaan, Philistia and the invasions of northern sea peoples from the Black Sea coasts had destroyed much. But Israel inland was thriving under Gideon. It was Egypt that was in peril. We read that in the fifth year of Merneptah, the vile chief of the Libyans and every foreign land which is with them are penetrating to transgress the boundaries of Egypt. The pharaoh ordered his army to repel them. The Karnak inscriptions list these enemies as Teresh, Etruscans, Sherdan, Sardinians, Luca, Lycians, Shekelesh, Sicilians, and Northerns from all lands. These people flooded eastern Libya, the nations of the Sea People's Federation. Just 11 years earlier, these nations invaded Egypt with a Libyan army. By this time, there were several references to Israel that have survived on Egyptian monuments. An inscription in a tomb of a general under Tutmos IV says that Palestine retinue was called God's land. This same designation is found in a building inscription of Amenhotep III. Both Amenhotep III and Ramesses II left behind references to the land of the nomads of Yahweh, but these are not the oldest. The Ebla tablets of Tel Madich in northwestern Syria a Canaanite text written in Sumerian cuneiform, the old Canaanite similar to Biblical Hebrew. These texts contain names we are familiar with. Urusalima, Jerusalem, Abramu, Abraham, Isom, Esau, Ishmaelu, Ishmael, Israelu, Israel, and remarkably from a much later period of the Ebla texts, we find even more Biblical names as we will see. These were discovered in 1975 AD. 1. Ages in Chaos, Volume 2. 3. The Oxford Illustrated Comp. 4. The Christ Conspiracy. 1202 BC, 2693 AM. This is the date provided by Frank Joseph for the arrival in May of the Tuatha e Danann in ancient Ireland. This author does not believe that this date is accurate. However, what Joseph has to say is very relevant. He reveals that the Danaan arrived in Ireland after a great disaster overtook their kingdom. This is described as a natural disaster. This is consistent with what we know of the Danaan in early Greece and the Aegean, who lost their cities and people in 1229 BC to a terrible series of disasters. One, survivors of Atlantis. 1197 BC, 2698 AM. The ancient Chinese calendar acknowledged today in China begins in this year, calculated from the fact that 2006 AD was the year 4703 of the Chinese calendar. 1193 BC, 2702 AM. The Assyrian temple of Adad and Anu, laid out in 1776 BC, has finally fallen into ruin in its 583rd year. Later it will be rebuilt. In this year, according to M. Don Sean in Elder Gods in Antiquity, the Phoenician historian Sanchuniathan finished his history of Phoenicia. 
Scholars estimate that he was born about 1250 BC and his book was a compilation from older source materials. And some scholars believe that it is the source of some of the Genesis text. Sun Chaniathan believes that the gods long ago were actually mortals who were powerful in knowledge and ability. Some of his sources were from the old nation of Ammon, descended from Abraham's kin. He claims also to have obtained some of his data from the Egyptian god Thoth. This may have been an allusion to either the surface writings on the Great Pyramid or books composed from writings taken off the Great Pyramid's surfaces. 1. Elder Gods in Antiquity 1191 BC, 2704 AM Israel's 40 years of rest from war is over, earned by Gideon over the Midianites in 1231 BC. Now the Iron Age culture of the Philistines begin to oppress Israel. This is 216 years, 108 plus 108, after the nation of Israel began. As will be seen, the descendants of Israelites, even as far as the ancient shores of Ireland, were also engaging the descendants of Ham, Philistines, for control over land, one judges. 1189 BC, 2706 AM, exactly 40 years after the Sea People's Federation of the Mediterranean and Aegean invaded Egypt and were repelled in 1229 BC at the close of the Trojan War, the Federation again invades Egypt and they are defeated by Ramesses III. So many of them were killed or captured that Pharaoh commemorated the event in the Temple of Medinet Habu, which lists the attackers, an astonishing list revealing the identities of the Sea Peoples as the same nations that were allied to Troy, the Hal Neb, northwestern Africa, the Luka, Lycians and Lydians, Sherdan, Sardinia, Durdni, Dardanians, known as Trojans, Turisha, Trojans, Teme, Libyans, Shekelesh, Sicilians, Tarshan, Etruscans in western Italy. These were all allies of the Philistines. The captives taken were questioned by Ramesses III as to why they invaded Egypt, and they replied that a shooting star destroyed their own homelands before their homes were destroyed by the sea. This was exactly 50 years after the start of the Trojan War in 1239 BC. 1. Survivors of Atlantis 1187 BC, 2708 AM After 220 years below the ecliptic, the Joshua Comet Group passes through the solar system unseen. 1180 BC, 2715 AM Traditional date for the founding of the city of Lyxus on the northwestern coast of Africa, facing the Atlantic, a Phoenician colony city, 1. Phoenicians 1159 BC, 2736 AM. The Kassite dynasty over Babylon falls after 70 years after the fall of Troy. The beginning of the dynasty started with King Enlil Nadin Ahi, and now in this year it ends with King Enlil Nadin Shumi, the only two in the entire dynasty having the same names. The Kassites were Elamites from the Zagros Mountains. Babylon is restored, and this was exactly 720 years after the famous Battle of Kuruksata in 1879 BC, when the Elamites were victorious over Babylon and her allies. The Kassites were defeated by the king of Assyria, Ashur-dan, beginning the Second Isin Dynasty. The Babylonians take back their city from Assyrian control, and Nebuchadnezzar I begins to rule. He organises great construction projects, brings new life into the ancient city and becomes famous for military campaigns against the Elamites when he brings back to Babylon the great idol of Marduk, Babylon's most venerated relic statue, which had been the centre of controversy in many wars. The Enuma Elish text is repopularised and Marduk worship spreads. This is exactly 552 years before the beginning of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar II of Babylon, famous in the Old Testament books, a king who would have a dream likened to that of the statue of Marduk that would be interpreted by the Hebrew prophet Daniel. This was 740 years after the Babel dispersion in 1899 BC, or 8880 months, a golden proportion number. 
This was 1656 years, or 552 times 3, or 414 times 4 after the Great Pyramid was finished in 2815 BC, and 1080 years after the Flood in 2239 BC. The date of 1080 Annus Mundi, 2815 BC, when the Great Pyramid was completed. 1. The Assyrians and Babylonians. 2. The Oxford Illustrated Guide. 3. The Oxford Illustrated Comp. 1135 BC, 2760 AM. Planet Phoenix enters the inner solar system, and in direct transit it darkens the sun as it did 552 years priorly in 1687 BC, when the old Bronze Age collapsed, and 552 years before that at the Great Flood in 2239 BC. At this time occurred the famous Battle of Marg Turiad, Field of Towers when the Tuatha de Danann of ancient Ireland fought against the giants called Firbolgs and Fomorians, who were descendants of Ham. This battle is recorded in the annals of Clonmacnoy. This was that one twentieth year since the founding of the Danann dynasty of Mycenae in 1255 BC, and 276 years, two phoenix orbits of 138 years, since 1411 BC when the Israelites destroyed the kingdom of the giants Sihon and Og of Bashan, defeating the sixty cities of Argob. At the start of the battle between the Tuatha de Danann and the Firbolgs, the hosts waited and watched on as two champions were selected and engaged in combat one on one. This was a Bronze Age institution adopted by the early Israelites, first exhibited in 1879 BC at the Battle of Kuruksata. It was again engaged in 1229 BC at the Battle for Troy and is the basis for the biblical story of David and Goliath. Goliath was a Philistine giant, descended from Ham. The Danaan in Ireland had sailed from the Mediterranean and Aegean after the disasters of 1229 BC. In a twist of fortune, the Danites of Israel, according to the scriptures, departed by ships because they refused to take by force the valley of Rephaim, giants, and the Philistine cities of Ashdod, Ashkelon, and Joppa, which were in their allotment of lands. The Firbolgs, or Gomorrah, were from the east, and were a maritime race of pirates. The early Irish people were called Tekdon, or House of Dan. Here we have the Danites fleeing Israel to finally end up 120 years later in Ireland, fighting the same race they sought to avoid. During the Battle of Mach Turiad, the sun darkened, a fact attested within the archives of the Chinese and Babylonians. Nebuchadnezzar I of Babylon left a record claiming that a comet darkened the sun. This is evidence that events occur in cycles, for during the reign of Nebuchadnezzar II, famous in the Old Testament, Planet Phoenix would again darken the sun in 583 BC, as described by Herodotus, 552 years after 1135 BC. A Babylonian fragment also dated about this time, preserved in the British Museum, reads, If on the first day of the month of Nisan, April, the sun looks sprinkled with blood and the light is cool, the king will die and there will be mourning in the country. Unquote. Another Babylonian inscription dated about 1140 BC, five-year variants, reads, quote, A comet arose whose body was bright like the day, while from its luminous body a tail extended like the sting of a scorpion, unquote. This phoenix transit occurred in the 24th year of Nebuchadnezzar I, and amazingly in the 24th year of Nebuchadnezzar II, in 583 BC, his reign began 607 BC. Phoenix returned and darkened the sun. Nebuchadnezzar I built the Ishtar Gate, still preserved today, and revived the worship of the ancient gods An, Enlil, and Enki, or Heaven, Lord Wind, and Lord Earth. Also in the Near East, this was the first regnal year of Tiglath Pileser I of Assyria, Exactly 138 years, Phoenix orbit after 1273 BC, when the Assyrian Empire began by annexing Babylon. The Phoenix phenomenon did not escape Egypt's notice. After Merenepta, Egypt had five rulers, one being a queen, all with short reigns, collapsing the 19th dynasty. 
In 1135 BC, the 20th dynasty was founded in Egypt by King Sethnacht and immediately occurred a terrifying omen. An immense black cloud covered the entire sky and the sun turned blood red and disappeared. Day became night and a rain of dust blanketed the land. We are indebted to Frank Joseph for this intelligence. The rain of dust is exactly what occurred around the world in 1902 AD which is perfectly aligned with an orbit of planet Phoenix. There is evidence that Mount Vesuvius in Italy also erupted, which is what occurred 552 years earlier in 1687 BC. In South America, the people of Cusco rebuilt their quake-damaged city, a people who survived the quakes in Phoenix transit 552 years earlier in 1687 BC, when they had occupied Tiwanaku. Because of the sun darkening episode so similar to that which occurred at Troy when a comet transited casting the earth in shadow. In 1229 BC, some early chronologists dated the fall of Troy in this year, which provides us direct evidence that there were many accounts of the sun and darkening still extant in his day as occurring in 1135 BC. Robert Graves in his The Greek Myths records a startling tradition about the Argive kings struggling against one another for the throne of ancient Greece. He dates this episode as occurring prior to 1050 BC. At this time, a contender for the throne named Atreus, who was an astronomer, predicted an eclipse of the sun using mathematics, and when the calculation proved correct, his brother departed the kingdom in disgust, leaving him the uncontested ruler. Graves remarks that Socrates took this tradition seriously, regarding it as evidence of his own theory that the universe is composed of cycles of vast duration that result in destruction. This is certainly possible, for 552 years later the sun darkening occurred again two years after Thales of Miletus, a Phoenician by remote descent, predicted it would occur in 583 BC. In this tradition we have a scientific knowledge of Phoenix in antiquity, and a Greek tradition revealing that the sun did indeed darken. As this timeline continues through history, we will see more and more Greek evidence that a phoenix was known widely. The contest over the throne of the Argives may have something to do with the fact that by this date, the Greek world of antiquity had been overrun by the Dorians. The Dark Age of the Aegean, most of the Mediterranean, even Egypt, the Near East, India and China, Anatolia and the Black Sea cultures began with a series of migrations of people of Japhetic stock that some historians like to call Aryans or Indo-European peoples of very fair complexions. The Dorians were kin to the original Greeks, not the Danaan or Ionian Greeks. When the Dorians entered the area, much of Mycenae fled. Many of the Thebans fled to Sardinia and Ionians through the Peloponnese sailed back over the Aegean to Asia Minor. The Hellenic culture developed as a result of these Dorian invasions. These patrilinear cultures nailed the lid on the coffin of the earlier matriarchal societies. The Hellenes were a unification of indigenous Japhetic peoples in ancient Greece, Phoenicians, Syrians, Canaanites and Israelites, known as Danaan and Ionians and Achaeans, and the Dorians that settled among them all at the beginning of the Dark Age. Because of the Dorian invasion, many Danaan took to sea and fled to Ireland. During these dark centuries, these various cultures became unified through intermarriage, alliances, treaties, population shifts, and came to identify themselves as one people, the Hellenes. The outsiders concocted a fictitious genealogy, not from Japheth of the locals and Dorians, but from Deucalion, who was the Greek Noah, survivor of an ancient flood. Because the Semitic newcomers also had a patriarch who survived a flood, Noah, then their own genealogies were made to fit this history. For this reason, the Hellenes were later renowned as sons of Deucalion. The strong cultural seat of the Hellenes was in Thessaly. After the disasters of the Trojan War, the Dorians were an Iron Age culture. The Dorian invasion was only a part of the mass migrations occurring after the global disasters in 1229 BC. Other Black Sea and Balkan cultures of Japhetic stock moved south. One people, historians call Aryans for want of a better term, invaded India and overran Dravidian culture, imposing a strict caste system. The Nordics ruled over the darker-skinned and dark-eyed indigenous people, which explains why so much of the Vedic and Sanskrit literature directly and indirectly hint of a cold, Sabbatic origin. 
which would have been alien to the Dravidians. These people, kin to the Dorians, settled also in Asia Minor, but as this was a major Ionian region, they assimilated quietly. Innumerable masses of people from the north migrated into ancient Elam and Iran, where they would mix with the population and later emerge as the nations of Persia and Media. This year is 3240 before Armageddon, or 1080 times 3 years. 1. Atlantis, mother of empires. 2. Round Towers of Atlantis. 3. Celtic myth and legend. 4. Jasher. 5. Nature worship. 7. The philosopher and the druid. 8. The stone angle. 9. Destruction of Atlantis. 10. History and quotations. 11. Introduction to comets. 12. Flying serpents and dragons. 15. The origins of Greek civilization. 16. History and quotations. 17. The Greek myths. 1131 BC, 2764 AM. This is the date some believe that the Tuath de Danan king, Lugaid Iam Fadhe, instituted the games of myth. The victors won wives. He was the twelfth king of his line. It is not clear if this dating is accurate, however. This was the 276th year, 138 plus 138, of Israel since it conquered Canaan in 1407 BC. 1. Round Towers of Atlantis. 1129 BC, 2766 AM. Tiglath Pilasa I of Assyria conquers Babylon exactly 144 years after Assyria became an empire in 1273 BC and annexed Babylon. The cuneiform texts contemporary with his reign claim he had conquered all of his neighbours and forged an expansive empire. This was 30 years after Assyria defeated the Kassites. 1. A short history of the world. 1123 BC, 2772 AM. The Anunnaki planet Nibiru enters the inner solar system after 732 years below the ecliptic and passes dangerously close to Earth in transit. This occurred when the Far East was facing the sun and Europe was facing the black night skies. The Chinese record a violent sun darkening episode. The mandate of heaven declared the change of rulership and during a battle on land the comets fought in the sky. The Shang dynasty collapsed and the Zhao dynasty emerged as 250,000 orientals took to ships and disappeared over the eastern horizon to land on the shores of ancient America. H.G. Wells in his short history of the world wrote that this collapse of dynasty occurred in 1125 BC, two years off. And Frank Joseph wrote that this all happened in 1122 BC, one year off. Nibiru begins its 60-year journey over the ecliptic. This was 792 years after Nibiru passed in 1915 BC and caused worldwide disasters, the ancients calling it Typhon. They declared it was the sister monster of Phoenix. This was 324 years, 108 times 3, after Israel escaped the cataclysm in Egypt in 1447 BC at the Exodus. In the year 96 AD, the book of Revelation was written which has a perfect description of what Nibiru is going to do to the world in 2046 AD in the Trumpet Judgments. The date 96 AD is exactly 1218 years after 1123 BC, when Nibiru destroys ancient China, and counting this same 1218 years after 96 AD is the year 1314 AD, when Nibiru again destroys China and the Near East. 1. A Short History of the World 1121 BC, 2774 AM. An old inscription on the vestry of the church of St Peter upon Cornhill in London reads that Brutus came to Britain in 1120 BC. This was 108 years after the fall of Troy in 1229 BC and 360 years after Troy was founded in 1481 BC. Brutus was the descendant of Aeneas and occupied the city of London, London renaming it Caer Troia, or New Troy, though the name never stuck. Between 1135 to 1106 BC, Brutus departed Italy and took up residence with fugitives from Troy living in bondage in Greece under King Pandrusus. Brutus led them in an insurrection that achieved their freedom, and King Pandrusus gave Brutus 324 ships with provisions. At 50 people per ship, this was 16,200 people. However, if these were not warships, then their capacity could have been up to 80 to 100 people. 
At 80 per ship, their population would have been 25,920 people, enough to start a nation. Brutus received some kind of a divine omen that instructed him to sail past the European continent to the far western isles, which he was told would be the future seat of an empire. Tradition affirms that both Britain and Ireland were populated by the two opposing forces of the Trojan War. The Danaan of Israelite origin settled Ireland, and the descendants of Ilium of Troy settled Britain. The later cultures of the Brits and the Irish would continue this animosity, one tracing our ancestors. 1113 BC, 2782 AM. The fifth Mayan Baktun is complete, 720,000 days. From the start of the Mayan Long Count calendar in 3113 BC, this is the 2000th year of the Mayan calendar. 1109 BC, 2786 AM. After orbiting the sun for 395 years, the dark satellite, a former moon of Nibiru of rock and metal, passes Earth unseen. In this year, Tiglath Pileser I makes war with the people called Hatti. The Hittite civilization fell, but the infusion of Nordic blood into the area revived the survivors. This Assyrian invasion occurred 120 years after their Hittite forebears were devastated in the Trojan War and attendant disasters. 1104 BC, 2791 AM. This is the approximate date that Cadiz was founded by the Phoenicians as a city colony in Spain, one Phoenicians. 1101 BC, 2794 AM. This is the traditional date for the death of Brutus. At his death, the land was divided up into three regions, England, Britain, Scotland and Wales. One of his ruling sons was named Locrinus. The land may have been divided at this time, but the denominations as Scotland and Wales would be many centuries later. 1. Saxons, Vikings and Celts 1100 BC, 2795 AM Traditional founding date of Utica on North African coast, a Phoenician city colony founded 287 years before Carthage, according to ancient sources. By this date, the Phoenician sea exploration and trade was thriving, the ships of Tyre also having Israelite sailors. Phoenicia was already saturated with Israelite blood. They had been living together now for over 260 years, one Phoenicians. 1099 BC as Phoenician ships sailed past the Pillars of Hercules, Straits of Gibraltar, along the Atlantic coasts of Africa and Europe to the Tin Islands, Britain, a storm blew a Phoenician vessel off course and sent it voyaging through strange waters. It sailed on to discover a vast western continent across the Atlantic, according to Diodorus Siculus. The ship had to have made the return journey to Phoenician ports in order for the discovery to have been known. Strabo wrote that the Phoenicians explored the North African coasts and beyond into the Atlantic a short time after the Trojan War. The term Phoenician at this time and later designated any Semitic sea trader, and we know that Israelites were in their programs. Theopompus of Chios wrote that King Midas, even before this date, had been told about the geography of Europe, Asia and Libya and of another great landmass, immeasurable, with numerous cities of vast and bizarre designs. The visitation of bearded men on the early American coasts were preserved by the Olmeca and Mayan, as well as the Inca in South America. Throughout Central America in the Yucatan regions are many Mayan ruins, with some boasting artistic reliefs and steelers showing bearded visitors to their cities in antiquity. Native Americans, like the Maya, had no facial hair. The visitation gave rise to the legends of Votan, of the race of Can, and the Phoenicians were of the race of Cain. Others named in America were Kulkalan, Kulkukain, and Quetzalcoatl, or Viracocha. These saviour gods were later mixed in their traditions with the Phoenician sailors. The early Americans were fanatical about building their pyramids, and this was the year 1716 Anno Pyramid, or 52 times 33 years. They held this sum in veneration, being that all their calendars are based off of 52. Further, the Americas were populated after the Babel Dispersion in 1899 BC, or exactly 800 years earlier. 
interestingly, this year was 270 years, 3240 months being 1080 times 3, after the Danites in Israel overran and occupied a Phoenician city, beginning the amalgamation of the cultures in 1369 BC. 1. Pirates and the Lost Templar Fleet. 2. The Lost Treasure of King Juba. 1063 BC. 2832 AM. The Anunnaki planet Nibiru completed its 60-year journey north of the ecliptic and passes back out of the inner solar system, completing its 792 years orbit. While there are no known records that it was seen from Earth, the calendrics for this year are interesting. This is 3168 years, 792 times 4, before Armageddon in 2106 AD, when the chief cornerstone will destroy the power of the Anunnaki, a sum found in 1 Timothy 2.5, in the statement, Mediator between God and man, which is exactly what the stone is, and he has the divine right to redeem mankind from the oppression of the Anunnaki. This statement has the grammatical value of 3168, according to Bonnie Gaunt. 1060 BC, 2835 AM. Approximate date for when Egyptian envoy Wen Amun travelled to Syria in search of wood, probably cedars of Lebanon, and found ports full of numerous merchant vessels that were organised into shipping guilds. These would have been Syrians, Canaanites and Phoenicians, with Israelites mixing with them all. 1. The origins of Greek civilization. 1051 BC, 2844 AM. Israel rebels against the words of the prophets and wants a king like other nations. They elect Saul to be their king, a man much taller than other Israelites. Saul is initially a hero and good king, though faithless. Through calendrics, he is associated with wickedness, as this is the year 2052 of the Vedic calendar, or Kali Yuga, Black Age. And in 2052 AD, the Anunnaki seven kings will again rule over mankind. Biblical scholars like to think Saul and even David were Israelite mythical figures, but there are things to take into consideration. The stories of them are detailed and extensive in the books of Chronicles and Kings, with many details on geography, fauna and cities, now known as true to the archaeologists. Further, the Canaanite Ebla tablets written in Sumerian cuneiform specifically mention Sa'ulun, Saul, and Da'udun, David, in a script very close to Biblical Hebrew. They also mention Urusalima, Jerusalem, and Israeliu, Israel. Most importantly, though, is the uncontested and well-documented fact that this was a global dark age. The historians of other countries were not even recording the events for posterity in their own respective nations, much less largely unknown happenings in the interior of Israel. The scholars are hypocritical to admit that there is very little historical writings or evidence for any nations, peoples or cultures between 1200 to 800 BC, and then criticise the biblical records for being fictitious about personalities when the ancient chroniclers got all the historic and geographic details right. Ancient Earth Killer Group Passes Unseen Through Solar System 1. The Christ Conspiracy 1047 BC, 2848 AM The Joshua Comet Group Passes Through Inner Solar System Unseen from Earth 400 years after the Exodus in 1447 BC and 360 years after Israel conquered most of Canaan in 1407 BC 1039 BC 28.56 AM The Anunnaki chronology is one that measures kingship over Earth, like the Sumerian king lists that state over and over that at certain times kingship was lowered to Earth. This timeline is fixed on the great year system of 600 year periods. Seven 600 year periods, 4200, from the start of the Anunnaki chronology to this year, demonstrates this. This was also 3,000 years, 600 times 5, since Earth entered this preset orbit around the Sun in 4039 BC, and this year of 1039 BC was 2,400 years, 600 times 4, after the Watchers descended to Earth in 3439 BC. That event before the Flood was 600 years before Noah was born in the first year of the Oppression, in 2839 BC under the Nephilim dynasty, 
which was 1,800 years, 600 times 3, before this year of 1039 BC. Lastly, this was 1,200 years, 600 times 2, or 432,000 days, after the Great Flood in 2239 BC, and 600 years after Ephraim and Manasseh, the tribe of Joseph, were added to the Israelite family as the tribe of adoption in 1639 BC. These two tribes would in the last days found the greatest company of nations and states the world has ever seen, the United States of America in 1776 AD, just as this year was 1776 Anno Pyramid. The Great Pyramid was the seal of Israel and is also on the seal of the United States. It was the belief of the ancients that every 600 years a divine man would appear on earth, and in this year we are not disappointed. David is born, son of Jesse, the youngest of his brothers who is a mere shepherd boy of great faith. He will become the most popular hero of Israel and king. This year of his birth was 408 years after the exodus from Egypt, in 1447 BC, 24.48 AM, or exactly 24.48 plus 24.48 months, 48.96, and 3.68 years, 44.16 months, after Israel conquered Canaan in 1407 BC. The sum of 44.16 is 552 times 8. This year features prominently in the chronometry of the Great Pyramid's own internal timeline, as seen in chronotecture, lost science of prophetic engineering. 1. The Christ Conspiracy 1033 BC, 2862 AM Saul leads the Israelites to victory over the Amalekites and captures their king Agag. Though commanded by God through the prophet Samuel to kill Agag, Saul does not, marvelling over the gigantic size of the man. Saul was aware that Agag was cursed by Moses because the Amalekites attacked the rear of the Israelite train when they were escaping Egypt in 1447 BC. Now, this was 414 years, a cursed earth period, after 1447 BC, and the prophet Samuel takes up the sword and slays Agag, which was obviously a title, which transfers the curse to King Saul personally. Interestingly, this is 2070 years, 414 times 5, after the start of the Kali Yuga calendar in 3103 BC. 1. Exodus 2. Samuel 1027 BC, 2868 AM The five lords of the Philistines meet with Israel's army on the field of battle. Among their ranks are truly gigantic men descended from the Anakim and Rephaim giants that fled from Israel into Philistia in 1407 BC, 380 years earlier. One of the champions of the Philistines was a giant named Goliath of Gath. His enormous sons were also in the ranks, one having six fingers on his hands and six toes on each foot, standing nine feet tall. Goliath himself stood nine foot six inches in height. Prior to this engagement, Goliath himself stole the Ark of the Covenant from the Israelites, but the Philistines returned it after a plague started killing their people. Now in Bronze Age fashion, Goliath calls out to the Israelite army for a champion to fight in one-on-one -on -one under the heroic code, as done priorly in the Trojan War, the Battle of Mag Turiet in Ireland, among the Danan, and the Battle of Kuruksata in 1879 BC. David, a boy of 12 years, a shepherd who had already killed a lion and a bear with his sling, went to the Israelite camp and saw the fear of the Israelite soldiers. Overcome by the spirit, David challenges Goliath and then slays the Philistine giant with a stone to the forehead, fulfilling the archetype of the stone that will end the Anunnaki, those who fathered the giants of old. David was the boy king giant slayer of early traditions. By this year, Israel had been having problems with the Philistines, for 164 years off and on. In this battle, the Philistines were routed, but the sons of Goliath got away. 1023 BC, 2872 AM. The Roman historian Tacitus claims that British annals he had access to claimed that London was founded 270 years before Rome. Rome was founded in 753 BC. This is 98 years after the date of 1121 BC for Brutus landing in Britain and founding Trajanova, New Troy, which would later be called London. These dates merely exhibit the antiquity of London, though they both may be incorrect. 1. St Paul in Britain 
1011 BC, 2884 AM. With Philistines winning every battle, the king of Israel, Saul, is destitute and consults the witch of Endor. He is soon killed in battle with the Philistines, and so is his son Jonathan, the friend of David who is 28 years old. Saul fell victim to his own curse. As this was the 396th year after Israel conquered Canaan and became a nation, we find 396 to be half of 792. This was the 180th year of Philistine oppression since 1191 BC and 400 years since 1411 BC when Israel killed the giant kingdoms of Bashan and Argob, making the surviving giants flee to Philistia. 1. Samuel 1010 BC Geoffrey of Monmouth, about 1150 AD, wrote that the founding of Londonum was in the 2885th year of the world, referring to the Annus Mundi dating system. His Historia Regum Britanniae traced the regions of London back to Troy, the ancient books of Liber Albus and Recordatum Civitatis, Speculum, convey that the high antiquity of London reaches back before Rome. This date may be the truest one concerning the beginning of London. Notice that this exact year was 1229 years after the Great Flood, which was the world's new beginning event, and 1229 BC was the year Troy fell and Trojans travelled to Italy. The length of Rome through its monarchy, republic and then empire was from 753 BC to 476 AD or 1229 years. 1. Gog and Magog 1009 BC, 2886 AM David, 30 years old, becomes king and begins to rule from Hebron, the ancient Kirjath Arba of the Anakim, where Abraham took up residence. He had been formally anointed by Samuel the prophet. In ancient Ireland, the king Olam, forever, Fodla, began his reign in this year, lasting 40 years. He conquered Tara, early Irish form of Torah or books of Moses, and began a dynasty. This legend seems to be an ancient Irish memory of King David. 1. 2 Samuel 1003 BC, 2892 AM David conquers the city of Jerusalem, known as the Holy City from ancestral times, and sets his throne there. He is 36 years old and acknowledged as king throughout all of Israel. We have virtually no records from this Dark Age period from any nations in the world that chronicle events at this time. David acknowledges his faith in the Most High God, a title for the deity that Sun Chuniathon, historian of Phoenicia, at that time claimed was a popular god throughout Phoenicia. This begins the throne of David, 444 years, golden proportion number, after the Exodus in 1447 BC, and law of Moses is received. This is 72 years before the Israelite civil war, which resulted in the divided kingdoms of Israel and Judah in 931 BC. This is exactly 3,000 years, 600 times 5, before the birth of the Antichrist in 1996 AD, who will later in his life pretend to sit on the throne of David. 997 BC, 2898 AM. Planet Phoenix passes through the inner solar system in near transit and is seen from Earth as it completes another 138-year orbit. This is King David's sixth year as King of Israel at Jerusalem he being 42 years old. David sees the angel of death, Phoenix, between heaven and earth like a sword over Jerusalem, imagery taking us back to 3895 BC, when Phoenix appeared as a fiery flaming sword in the sky. At this time, the Philistines sought to attack Israel again, and they were opposed by Goliath's four gigantic sons. David's song in 2 Samuel is a fragment of this experience. It corresponds with chapter 21, which conveys Israel's victory over the Philistines. God rode upon a cherub, a popular Near East motif, the symbol of the phoenix, like the Assyrian god Ninurta, riding the winged disc. The lack of historic records at this time is nothing to concern us. At this time, the global dark age was already over 150 years enduring, over two centuries in other regions. It is phenomenal that about the only historic records from this window in history 
between 1229 to 1135 BC and 800 BC were out of ancient Israel. As the whole world was plunged into illiteracy and stagnation, Israel enjoyed its only golden age it ever had, the reigns of David and his son Solomon, the King Jedediah. Though historic records were lacking, scientists have published findings that a locally catastrophic impact of a comet or large meteorite destroyed the region known as the Badlands of northern Montana in the Americas at about 1000 BC. This is only three years' variance. This year is the isometric epicentre for the entire timeline encoded in the Great Pyramid's four cornerstones at the base of the monument as discovered by D. Davidson and published in 1924 AD. Davidson's research reveals that 2046 AD is the terminal year in the pyramid's orbital chronology, which began in 4039 BC. This year of 997 BC is 3042 years after 4039 BC, when Earth began orbiting in its present position around the Sun between the orbital belts of Venus and Mars, and it is also 3042 years before 2046 AD when Nibiru will pull Earth back onto the dark star's ecliptic to orbit the Sun, north to south, as do Phoenix and Nibiru, one survivors of Atlantis. 995 BC, 2910 AM Both the ancient Earth killer comet group as well as the King of Israel Great Orbit Comet began passing through the inner system. The King of Israel Great Orbit is a long period strewn field spread in a train 14 years long. 971 BC, 2924 AM King David is 68 years old and too old to rule. His son Jedediah takes the throne and will be remembered later as the wisest king to ever live, the famous King Solomon. Solomon was a name attached to King Jedediah after his death. He is said to have had five different names. Over 250 years after this date, the tribes of Israel would be spread throughout the Assyrian domains, and the traditional histories of King Jedediah will be confused with the Assyrian king Shalmaneser, Shalman the king, the later Jews calling their historic predecessor by another's name, Solomon. This was the 14th and final year of the passing detritus of the King of Israel Great Orbit Comet Train as it disappears beneath the ecliptic for 984 years. Solomon's first year of rule begins a 40-year period of Israelite prosperity in the post-Bronze Age, Dark Age epoch. Before 931 BC, when Israel and Judah will be forever torn apart into two separate nations in a civil war, David died at 24,480 days old, 68 years. 1. 2 Samuel 2. 1 Kings 3. Ages in Chaos, Volume 1 967 BC, 2928 AM King Solomon follows the divine instructions passed down to him from his father David and lays the foundation for the temple in Jerusalem in the 36th year of the Davidic dynasty founded in 1003 BC. This is his fourth year of kingship over Israel. Scripture provides yet a second way to date this event reading that construction of the temple began exactly 480 years after the Exodus in 1447 BC. The project would require seven years, 2520 days being 360 times seven. Solomon received the divine instructions just as Moses received divine instructions to build the tabernacle to house the Ark of the Covenant. Before this, Enoch received divine instructions that the Sethites followed to build the Great Pyramid Complex in Egypt. King Hiram of Phoenicia contributed the lumber to build the temple, the famous cedars of Lebanon mentioned as early as the Sumerian Epic of Gilgamesh. From Ezion Geber, backbone of a giant, to the south to Phoenicia in the north, the Israelites flourished and the fame of King Jedediah's fame spread throughout the courts of Dark Age times, a name found on many ancient tablet writings as Hedad, a name that would later be famous and adopted by other kings. 1. 1 Kings 961 BC, 2934 AM At the end of the year the temple in Jerusalem is complete and Ark of the Covenant placed inside the most holy place protecting the tables of the law, the Torah, rod of Aaron and other ancient Israelite artefacts. 
Many thousands of gold and silver vessels and containers are placed within the temple for use by the priests. This is 864 years after Abraham finished his ministry at Giza, translating the writings on the Great Pyramid in 1825 BC, the 42nd year of Solomon's reign. tiglath pileser II begins the Neo-Assyrian Empire at Nineveh in this year, 312 years after the start of the Assyrian Empire in 1273 BC by tiglath pileser I. Some time after the temple was constructed, the Queen of Sheba visited Israel and Solomon's court. Josephus in his antiquities wrote that she was an Egyptian princess ruling over all of Ethiopia. She brought tribute and returned to her kingdom pregnant with Solomon's child, who was later known as King Menelik I of Ethiopia. Among the treasures Solomon gave her to take back was a copy of the Torah scriptures and the Enochian books from before the flood, which would later be discovered in the Ethiopic church and translated into English. It was in Solomon's reign that the Latins in Italia built Alba. It was from this time that the kings of Italia of the Latins came to be called the Albans. 1. 1 Kings 2. Augustine City of God Book 18 957 BC 2938 AM the temple in Jerusalem is dedicated in a religious ceremony with the nation in attendance. This was 70 by 7 years, 490, after the Exodus in 1447 BC, and 9 jubilees, 450 years is 50 times 9, after Israel became a nation in 1407 BC. This was 1380 years, 138 times 10, after the birth of their ancestral patriarch Shem, in 2337 BC and 990 years after the birth of Abraham in 1947 BC. 1. Kings 947 BC, 2948 AM King Solomon's, Jedediah's, house is completed exactly 500 years after the Exodus. This was the 1000th year since Abraham's birth in 1947 BC. 930 years, 792 plus 138, after the Abrahamic Covenant was instituted in 1877 BC, 900 years after the birth of Isaac in 1847 BC, and 840 years, 120 times 7, after the birth of Jacob, Israel, in 1787 BC. This was 460 years after Israel became a nation in 1407 BC or 5520 months. 1. 1 Kings 946 BC, 2949 AM After 286 years below the ecliptic, the Sodom Trojan Apocalypse Comet Group enters the inner solar system. 945 BC, 2950 AM King Solomon sold King Hiram of Tyre 20 cities in northern Israel, assimilating more and more with Phoenicia. This was 420 years after the Israelites forcibly moved in and dwelled among the Phoenicians. By this time there is no distinction between Israelite and Phoenician. 1 Phoenicians 931 BC, 2964 AM King Solomon died in his 40th year of kingship over Israel. He was the third and final king over the unified tribes and his death brings about a struggle for the succession. The Israelite civil war results with the creation of the two kingdoms, Israel in the north and Judah in the south. The northern kingdom was called the Ten Tribes. This begins the divided kingdom chronology. By this time the growing Assyrian Empire struck terror into the hearts of its neighbours. By their proximity the Israelites were particularly vulnerable. Many took to ships from Phoenician ports to parts unknown to the North African coast, the Aegean Isles, Crete, Iadan, to Asia Minor and the Peloponnese. It was at this time that the Ionic states of the Greek world experienced a resurgence. The Israelites akin to the Ionians, who were descended from the Danan, bringing a new impetus to Hellenic life. The Milesian state of Asia Minor at this time was deluged with Israelites. Others sailed to Sardinia, Sicily, Spain, Italy and to the British Isles. There was a swelling of Phoenician colonies and colonial populations throughout the coast of the Mediterranean. 
This was 72 years after the start of the throne of David in 1003 BC, 324 years, 108 times 3 after the Danan dynasty of Mycenae was founded in 1255 BC. This was the end of a judged time period of 434 years that started when the Danites began coexisting with the Phoenicians in 1365 BC and the people of Asia Minor. As this is the year 476 of the nation of Israel, we will see that the sum of 476 years has great application to future Israel in the years to come. A Jewish writer in the 9th century AD named Eldud wrote, In Jeroboam's time, successor of Solomon, the tribe of Dan, being unwilling to shed their brethren's blood, took a resolve to leave the country. Moses prophesied this, saying that Dan is a lion's whelp. He shall leap from Bashan. Bashan was the land allotted to Dan, and he did indeed leap away. The civil war and beginning of the divided kingdom initiates the tearing of Israel, referred to by the prophet Hosea. The seer said, Come and let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn, and he will heal us. He hath smitten, and he will bind us up. After two days he will revive us. In the third day he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Scripture reads in more than one passage that a day unto the Lord is as a thousand years. We know this prophecy concerns a three thousand years timeline, involving three separate one thousand year periods, involving Israelite history. At the end of the three thousand years will be the resurrection event in 2070 AD, 414 times 5. In the year 931 BC, Israel was torn and 186 years later the ten tribes of the northern kingdom are taken captive by the Assyrians, where they later escape into Asia and Europe to become mighty nations. Exactly 1,000 years after this civil war is 70 AD, when the Romans destroy Jerusalem and the temple, kill over a million Jews and sell 97,000 Jews into slavery, ending with the kingdom of Judea. 1,000 years after 70 AD is 1070 AD, when the last European pagans become Christian, when the descendants of the lost ten tribes of Israel are all under the new covenant, known to us as Christianity, heirs to the promises of Abraham. This is the second day. 1,000 years after this is 2070 AD, the year of the resurrection when the breach is healed. That the resurrection occurs in 2070 AD is found by many other ways. 1. Kings. 2. Tracing our ancestors. 927 BC, 2968 AM. In the fifth year of Judah's first king, Rehoboam, the king of Egypt, called Shishak in scripture, invaded Judah and sacked Jerusalem and the temple, taking all of the gold and silver exactly 520 years after the Israelites fled from Egypt. In 1447 BC, with the wealth of Egypt. This was 330 years before Nebuchadnezzar II of Babylon would do the same to Jerusalem again in 597 BC. The first historical mention of the kingdom of Judah is on the stele of Shishonk of Bubastis, where the Egyptian ruler calls himself King of Judah. This was 480 years after the conquest of Canaan in 1407 BC. The Israelites did not come to the aid of Judah. 1. 2 Chronicles 2. The Gospel Truth 884 BC 30.11 AM King Ashur Nasirpal ascends to throne of Assyria, who has the temple of Ninib built at Nimrud. Two limestone slabs at the temple found by archaeologists reveal the antiquity of the Marduk slaying Tiamat myths of the creation of the world. 1. Enuma Elish 881 BC, 3014 AM King Omri of Israel built the city Samaria, capital of the northern kingdom of Israel. This was 50 years, a Hebrew jubilee, after the civil war that created the two kingdoms of Israel and Judah in 931 BC. At this time, Israel was known to its neighbours by three appellations. House of Israel was a name the Israelites attributed to themselves as descendants of Jacob, 
heirs to the promises of Jacob, Isaac, and Abraham. House of Isaac was a patronymic epithet known by Israel's neighbours, a name older than that of Israel. Scripture reads that in Isaac shall thy seed descendants be called. It was prophesied that these people would fill the earth. The third title for Israel was House of Omri, the dynastic name for Israel's ten tribes, and a political name that was used by the Assyrians when describing Israel. Omri was the first Israelite king to codify its laws, a soldier popular with the people who secured the throne of Samaria. His son was Ahab of biblical fame, who married a Phoenician princess, Jezebel, daughter of King Ethbaal of Tyre. This was exactly 136 years to 745 BC, when the Assyrians will attack Samaria and deport the Israelites, or 48,960 days, 24,480 plus 24,480. The Israelites, far from home, would rebuild their city in a foreign land and call it Samarkand, or New Samaria. 1. Post-Captivity Names of Israel 874 BC, 3021 AM First regnal year of King Ahab, son of Omri, king of Samaria. King Ahab married the Phoenician princess Jezebel, infamous in the biblical records for her wickedness. By this marriage, Samaria secured a powerful alliance with Phoenicia. He affords her much authority, and she introduced Baal worship into Israel, and goddess worship, Astoreth. Later, she would hunt and kill the prophets of God. Already, Israel and Phoenicia were regarded as one people, and these similarities in culture, beliefs, language, and mythologies was also in common with Syria. Jezebel's father was King Ithabel, Ethbel of Tyre, and his name is found on ancient inscriptions and records that attest that by this time he was already finding fleets to go out and found colonies throughout the Mediterranean. This begins yet another wave of Israelite Western Semitic migrations. A prophet of Israel, Elijah the Tishbite, prophecies of the coming terrible seven year famine and drought. The Lord hath called for a famine and it shall also come upon the land seven years. This was 2520 days, 360 times 7. At this time, Israel and Phoenicia enjoyed great prosperity and would continue for seven years until the start of the famine in 867 BC. 1. 1 Kings 2. The Gospel Truth 3. Phoenicians 4. 2 Kings 867 BC, 3028 AM the seven-year famine begins and the skies yield forth no rain. This is exactly 792 years after the seven-year famine began in Egypt in 1659 BC that Joseph Diosa predicted. This was the 540th year of Israel since 1407 BC, half of 1080. The famine afflicted Israel Samaria most of all, and at this time Queen Jezebel began hunting the prophets of God. The scriptures reveal that the famine was particularly bad, that there was no food or water. Elijah commanded the people migrate away from Israel, arise and go thou in thy household, and sojourn wherever so thou canst sojourn, for the Lord hath called for a famine. This dearth initiated a populous exodus of Israelites from Phoenician ports, as many thousands of families and entire communities were sent out to populate the Phoenician colonies of the Mediterranean as far as Spain. Fleets of Israelites landed in Cyprus, Iadan, and sailed on to the coastal cities of their Ionian kin in Asia Minor, the Aegean and the Peloponnese. Israelites brought fresh blood into the ancient Danan cultures descended from Dan, and it was this infusion of people into the lands that would be called Greece that brought the Greek world out of its long slumber. For this was the 362nd year since the Trojan War and fall of Troy, and start of the Dark Age in 1229 BC. For over three centuries Greece had been utterly silent. Sicily and Sardinia became refuges to Israelites fleeing the famine, 
and by tragedy were the Israelites fulfilling the words of God to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob as they filled the coast of the earth. This was the 136th year since the start of the throne of David at Jerusalem in 1003 BC, or 48,960 days, 24,480 times 2 days, 1, 1 Kings. 860 BC, 3035 AM. The seven-year famine and drought is over. For seven years the Israelites that departed had been pushing westward, leaving the homeland and altering forever the demographics of the ancient world, and giving rise to what historians term as classical civilization. The Mediterranean nations where the people of Israel were absorbed by the locals were the first places to emerge bright and new out of the mists of the Dark Age as new ideas, new beliefs, new sciences and new hopes began pushing back the darkness of illiteracy and the historical record literally explodes with records, books and arts. Queen Jezebel seeks and kills the prophet of Israel named Elijah. 859 BC, 3036 AM King Ashur Nasir Pal's final year of reign an Assyrian king who boasted of reading the monumental inscriptions from before the flood. King Shalmaneser III ascends to the throne of Assyria and immediately begins expanding the empire. In this year, planet Phoenix passes through the inner solar system, completing its 138-year orbit, and evidence taken from Assyrian seals and palace wall reliefs exhibit that the Assyrians were expecting the return of the winged disc, Phoenix. According to Zechariah Sitchin, Phoenix was an antediluvian sign of divine kingship from the days of Enoch, and this was the 414th year, 138 times 3, since 1273 BC, beginning of the Assyrian Empire. During King Ahab's reign, according to the biblical records, there was fire from heaven, followed the next day by an earthquake. Elijah passes the mantle of prophecy over to Elisha, and the prophet then vanished into the sky before witnesses. Interestingly, the only two men in all of the scriptural records covering 30-36 years were Enoch and Elijah, and both were associated with planet Phoenix. Further, the length of the ascending passage in the Great Pyramid is exactly 30-36 pyramid inches, a subject covered in chronotecture. The calendrics for this year are telling, as the 72nd year of the divided kingdom since 931 BC, it was the 144th year since the throne of David was established in 1003 BC at Jerusalem. These are golden proportion numbers. Further, this was 270 years since the start of Neo-Assyria Empire in 1129 BC, this being 1080 times 3 months, 3240 months. Historian Montesinos at about 1628 AD wrote that the 32nd king of Cusco reigned in Peru exactly 2070 years, 414 times 5, after the beginning of Peruvian reckoning, which is calculated at 2921 BC. The number of 2070 denotes a precise knowledge of planet Phoenix's orbital periods. For 2070 years, this is exactly 15 orbits of 138 years each. 859 BC was 548 years after 1407 BC, 15th king of Cusco, a period wherein 17 kings reigned an average of 32 years each. The start date of 2921 BC was exactly 20 years before the end of Enoch's reign, the famous antediluvian chronologist. 1. Survivors of Atlantis. 2. The End of Days, Sitchin. 4. 1. Kings. 5. The Lost Realms, The Day the Sun Stood Still, Sitchin. 855 BC, 3040 AM. In year 4 of the annals of King Shalmaneser III of Assyria, we find that he attacked the city of King Nikdime, whose people filed on ships. Amazingly, archaeologists have found ancient texts at Ugarit, that described the expulsion of the Ionian population with King Nicmed, an old Greek name later adopted by King Nicomedes. Ugarit had been destroyed by the Sea Peoples in the 13th century BC Trojan War, 
but it had been reoccupied by Ionians, Israelites, for 8th century BC relics have been excavated there. The Ugaritic language was Semitic and very similar to later Hebrew in structure. Again we have the flight of Israelites or Israelite descended peoples forced to travel westward and northwest. These people had developed a high state of civilization and culture and now they would flood into the coastal ports of the Ionic states of Asia Minor and bring their knowledge and arts with them. The foundation to the Greek world we have come to know was by these migrations being founded. This was the year 552 since Israel became a nation in 1407 BC and 400 years after the Danaan founded the Ionian dynasty of Mycenae in 1255 BC. This was 1776 months, 148 years after the throne of David was established in 1003 BC at Jerusalem and 90 years, 1080 months after Solomon sold Phoenicia 20 cities of Israelites in 945 BC. 1. Ages in Chaos, Volume 1. 3. The Gospel Truth. 853 BC, 3042 AM. Well into the fifth year of King Shalmaneser III of Assyria, he invaded Syria Palestine and fought against a coalition of armies of Aramaic cities Damascus, Hamath, Israel, Ammon, Egypt, Phoenicia, and Syria. This was the Battle of Karkar in the Orontes Valley and was a standoff though in Assyrian records it was claimed as a victory. An inscription of King Shalmaneser III concerning this campaign is the first mention of Israel as an independent kingdom from Judah. This was 12 years before Shalmaneser III would subdue Israel and receive tribute from King Jehu, the son of Omri. At this time, for the past three years, Israel and Syria had a peace pact, but in this year the truce treaty was violated and King Ahab of Israel is killed by Naaman the Syrian. Assyria would invade five more times in the next 15 years with only very limited gains. This was 92 years, 1104 months is 552 times 2, after 20 Israelite cities were sold to Phoenicia in 945 BC, and 108 years after the temple was finished in Jerusalem in 961 BC. This counts 108 years into the future to 745 BC when the Assyrians will deport the Israelites into the east and northeast after they are conquered. 1. History in quotations. 2. Post-captivity names of Israel. 3. 1. Kings. 4. Phoenicians. 850 BC, 3045 AM. This is an approximate date for composition of the Kebra Nagast, a holy Ethiopian text that traces their ancestry back to King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. A few years prior to this date, the prophet Elijah was instructed by God to return on the way to the wilderness of Damascus and when thou comest, anoint Hazael to be king over Syria. In 2 Chronicles 22.5, we learn that Hazael did become king and Ahaziah, went with Jehoram the son of Ahab the king of Israel to war against Hazael king of Syria at Ramoth Gilead and the Syrians smote Joram, Jehoram. This scriptural account is confirmed by the victory stele of king Hazael of Damascus erected in the city of Dan, quote, I killed Jehoram son of Ahab king of Israel and I killed Ahaziahu Ahaziah son of Jehoram king of the house of David. And I set their towns into ruins and turned their land into desolation. Unquote. This incredible text recognized the two kingdoms of Israel and Judah. This discovery coincides with yet another one. Two wars were fought by Israel during this brief period between 851 to 847 BC. The Book of Two Kings mentions a war with King Mesha of Moab, now confirmed on the Mesha stele, which reads. Quote, Omri, king of Israel, had oppressed Moab many days, for Chemosh was angry at his land. His son succeeded him, Ahab, and he too said, I will oppress Moab. In my days he said it, but I saw my desire upon him and his house, and Israel perished utterly forever. Unquote. The Moabites did not fare well in this war and hated Israel. Mesha survived, and this text probably refers to the crushing defeat Israel suffered under King Hazael of Damascus. 1. Flying serpents and dragons. 2. 1. Kings. 3. History and quotations. 841 BC, 3054 AM. 
Shalmaneser III of Assyria finalized his dominion over Akkad, Borsippa, Kutha, and Babylon. Also, the kings of the Chaldeans, and in this his eighteenth year, according to his own annals, he invaded the west again and received tribute from, quote, the men of Tyre, Sidon, and of Jehu of the house of Omri, unquote, and, quote, in my eighteenth year of reign, I crossed the Euphrates for the sixteenth time, unquote. This was the 120th year of the Neo-Assyrian Empire founded in 961 BC and 288 years, 144 plus 144 after 1129 BC when Assyria took Babylon. This was also the 90th year, 1080 months of the divided kingdom. The Moabite, Syrian and Assyrian wars prompted another wave of Israelite migrations out of the region and into the waters of the Mediterranean. Through Phoenician trade lanes, there was a constant stream of reports coming into Israel about the ongoings of their kin overseas. Where Israelite descendants were flourishing was no secret, and many headed straight for Cyprus, Iadan, and the coastal cities of the Ionic states, where centuries of Israelite assimilation with locals created the Greek culture we are familiar with today. The sudden appearance of whole complete cultures and civilizations throughout the Aegean, northern Greece, the Mediterranean, North Africa and Spain, as will be shown herein, where no peoples were recorded to be before, were the result of a series of carefully planned migrations from Palestine. Israelites and their descendants were totally surrounding the greatest enemy they would ever know, Rome. This was 414 years after the founding of the Danan dynasty of Mycenae in 1255 BC. 1. Ages in Chaos, Volume 1 839 BC, 3056 AM King Shalmaneser III of Assyria invaded Syria one last time in what was largely an unsuccessful venture, 1 Phoenicians. 827 BC, 3068 AM After 220 years below the ecliptic, the Joshua Comet Group passes through the inner solar system. 812 BC, 3083 AM the city of Carthage is planned out and founded in this year on the North African coast, a Phoenician colony of Tyre called Quart Hadasht or New City. At this time the colony was full of Israelites and people descended from both Phoenicia and Israel. This is exactly 666 years after 1478 BC when the Chittim, Italia, attacked North Africa and the Libyans sent Annibal to invade Italia for 18 years. A scenario played out in history again in the Punic Wars between Rome and the Phoenicians of Carthage. Further, this was 666 years to the fall of Carthage by Rome in 146 BC. 1. Origins of Greek Civilization 810 BC, 3085 AM Syria and Israel again form an alliance and they make war against Judah. King Ahaz of Judah despairs and God instructs the prophet Isaiah to calm Ahaz and told him that in 65 years that, quote, Ephraim shall be broken, and that the riches of Damascus and the spoil of Samaria shall be taken away before the king of Assyria, unquote. This prophecy referred to the end of Israel as a kingdom in 745 BC, when the Assyrians deported the tribes to the far Assyrian frontiers. These unfortunate Israelites would be slaves and vassals, but would later emerge as powerful peoples who would become the greatest enemies of Rome. 1 Isaiah 807 BC, 3088 AM According to the famous letter of Alexander written to his mother Olympia that had been widely published long ago, the Greeks counted the origin of the Macedonians to go back 485 years from that of Alexander's death. The letter was published posthumously. To the early Greeks, the Macedonians were outsiders, not even considered Greeks, and their ancient Israeli pedigree will be seen as this chronology continues. This was exactly 600 years after Israel began as a nation in 1407 BC, and this year of the founding of Macedon was 476 years, a period signifying an Israelite institution, before Alexander the Great conquered Persia in 331 BC, the same year Nibiru passed through the inner solar system. This year was 138 years, Phoenix orbit, after Israel sold 20 cities to Phoenicia in 945 BC and it was the 120th year since Judah fell to Egypt in 927 BC, and the temple treasures were taken out of Jerusalem. 1 Augustine, City of God, Book 12. 800 BC, 3095 AM. 
This is an approximate date for the earliest Greek epic texts, the Iliad of Homer and the Theogony of Hesiod. The Iliad concerns the fall of Troy, 1229 BC, and the epic provides us with a lot of historical data confirmed by other sources. The earliest traditions of Homer claim him to have been an Ionian from Chios. This just might mean that Homer had Israelite blood. Homer also wrote the Odyssey about Odysseus' journey after the Trojan War. Hesiod was from Boeotia, a Danaan and Ionian region, and scholars have noted that much of the Theogony contains Middle Eastern concepts and literary origins, linked specifically with the Babylonian Enuma Elish tablets. Homer's popularity soared and his epic tale unified the various Greek cultures into one body of people who considered their beginnings to be in the age of the Theban War and Trojan War, 1244 to 1229 BC. This begins the rapid enlightening period of ancient Greece as the Dark Age dies and the Greeks begin reaching intellectual heights no other people before them ever obtained, the age of the philosophers. 1. The Greek Myths 2. Hesiod, Intro to Theogony, Works and Days 799 BC, 1396 AM Cadiz of Tartessus founded as a Phoenician Hebrew port city of Spain. Through Cadiz, the lands of Spain were quickly settled by Hebrew Phoenicians, the region called Iberia, or Land of the Hebrews. The Spanish river Ebro derived from Eba, ancestor of Abraham and the Hebrews. The river Guadalquivir was originally Wadi al-Hibri, as called by the Moors who invaded from Africa, meaning River of the Hebrews. In this year, according to the Annals of Miletus, a great body of adventurers set sail from Miletus and migrated away from the Ionic states. The Milesian state was founded by the Israelites and descendants of Darda of Ilium. The fleets of Ionians sailed west and found themselves in Spain. Miletus of Asia Minor was the largest exporter of dyed woolens in the ancient world. No doubt an art they obtained from their Phoenician kin and predecessors. Milesian tradition asserts that they were founded by a people who sailed from Crete in a large fleet. The region they came to occupy was originally settled by giants under the rule of Anax, said to be ten cubits high. But this is a retelling of the Israelite occupation of Canaan where dwelt the Anakin giants. This same body of ancient Israelites that in this year landed in Spain would move on yet again and land in Ireland. We know they landed in May, but the year of the migration to the Irish shores is unknown. Tradition claims that they landed at about 700 BC and they were opposed by the Danaan, their kin. But because among them were descendants of Judah, they were soon assimilated and became the aristocracy. The Irish Book of Invasions relates that the Milesians from Crete fled to Syria by way of Ionia, Miletus, and sailed west in the 13th century BC later reaching Ireland after a spell in Spain. The Milesians, Ionian Israelites, merely followed their Danaan forebears. Another tradition asserts that Spain was settled by Scythians, who escaped Egypt about the time of the Exodus and reached Iberia, becoming known as the Mil or Milesians and as the Mille Espain, who settled early Ireland as the Gaels. Among the settlers was one named Eber, Hebrew. From this lineage derived the Irish and Scots. A Jewish rabbi quoted by Grimaldi asserted that the ancient Irish people were descended from Ephraim, men of this tribe departing Egypt before the Exodus. Three separate traditions and all of them involving Israelites. It cannot be ignored that the early Irish people were called Iberians or Hebrews. The migration from Spain to Ireland is confirmed by geneticists. Geneticist Brian Sykes wrote that this was a large-scale movement into and later from Iberia and was family-based, not a mere male-led invasion. He relates that this is Celtic Pictish stock. Sykes wrote, The Irish myths of the Milesians were right in one respect. The genetic evidence shows that a large proportion of Irish Celts on both male and female sides did arrive from Iberia. The Milesians were guided to Ireland by a famous bard named Amergin. The Milesians produced the dominant families of Ireland and later Irish nobles would trace their lineage to them. Eremon was the first king and another early Milesian was Eber Don, two names linking them with the Israelites, Hebrew Dan. The origin of the Irish was told to be from a patriarch's 50 daughters.
This links the Irish to the Bronze Age Danaan and Israelites, for in early Greece the 50 daughters of Danaos, Dan, came from Egypt. The calendrics for this year are significant. This was 3240 years, 1080 times 3 of orbital chronology, and 1440 years, 144 times 10 after the deluge. This was also 2448 months, 204 years, since the throne of David was established at Jerusalem in 1003 BC. This was also the 132nd year from the divided kingdom, or 1584 months, 792 times 2. 1. Tracing our ancestors. 3. The Greek myths. 9. Post-captivity names of Israel. 10. Saxons, Vikings and Celts. 11. Celtic myths and legends. 792 BC, 3103 AM. Egypt is overrun by Ethiopians, beginning the 25th or Ethiopic dynasty. 776 BC, 3119 AM. Acting on divine instructions from the Delphic Oracle, King Iphitos of Elis instituted the Olympic Games. This was in response to the incessant wars and conflicts between the Greek states and a plague. Once the first games of Zeus were held, the plague abated. These games were derived from the Isthmian games of Corinth, which were presided over by Phoenician god Melikertes Melkarth. Those who became the Corinthians were originally Semitic sea traders called Phoenicians, but as we will see, they were Israelites. They brought a seven-day calendar to Greece. The Olympic festival was scheduled every 49 and 50 months alternatively. These numbers both involve the Hebrew Jubilee, a period of 49 years plus one rest year for the 50th year. Robert Graves attests that there are many close affinities between the ancient Corinthians and the Hebrews. The Olympian Games further unified the Greek states, and they occurred every four years from 776 BC to 393 AD, without fail until officially ended by the Roman Emperor Theodosius I. From beginning to end, there were exactly 288 Olympic festivals held during its 1168 year duration, or 144 plus 144. Though this began the Greek Olympiad calendar, the Games actually had their root in a local foot race going back to about 1000 BC. Two months before the five day Olympic festival began, the Olympic truce was imposed throughout the constantly feuding Greek world. There were no military actions, no judicial cases were conducted, and no death penalties carried out. This peace throughout Greekdom was imposed two days after the festival as well. Sometimes the truce did not suspend military actions, but it was held sacred and it did secure enemy safe passage to the Olympic Games. Olympic heralds were crowned with the olive wreath and carried a staff with a carved pair of copulating snakes the Caduceus. This was an Israelite symbol derived from the staff of Moses when he turned his staff into a serpent, and later when the Israelites in their wandering fashioned the bronze serpent staff. Further, at the Olympic festival the games could not begin until a black ram was sacrificed. The ancient Greeks regarded nightfall as the beginning of the day, yet another earmark of Israel. In Genesis the evening and the morning was the first day, the night coming before the sunlight. The Olympic Games signified that time in the ancient world when the descendants of Japheth and the descendants of Shem became one people. This was prophesied to occur by Noah. This union also explains why the language of the New Covenant with Israel was written in Greek. In The Origin of the Greek Civilization, historian Chester Starr wrote, quote, while the Phoenician origin of the Greek alphabet is clear both from the shape of its early letters and from the names given to them in Greek, the date, place and reasons for the borrowing lie too far back to be entirely visible. Unquote. There are two definitive calendrical facts that link this date with Israel. This was the 864th year foundation of time number, or 144 times 6 after Jacob, Israel, died. Second, this date of 776 BC serves as a calendrical epicenter between two 630-year periods, 70 times 9. Counting 630 years before 776 BC was 1406 BC, Israel's first year in the promised land of Canaan, and counting 630 years after 776 BC 
for a total of 1260 years was 146 BC, when both the Semitic Carthaginians of Phoenician and Israelite descent and Greece fell to the mighty of Rome. A cook named Koroibos was the very first winner of the Olympics. For the first 13 Olympiads, the 210 yard stadium race was the only event. This is interesting, for we find that 13 Olympiads was exactly 52 years, a popularly calendrical unit in the Americas. 1. The Naked Olympics 2. The Greek Myths 11. The Origins of Greek Civilization 775 BC, 3120 AM This is the first year of the first Olympiad. This is the first official Western world calendar. And as is shown in When the Sun Darkens and Nostradamus and the Planets of Apocalypse, the Western world will die in 2040 AD during a pole shift caused by planet Phoenix. This year, 775 BC, is the year 2040 Anno Pyramid, the pyramid being the seal of both Joseph, Israel and the United States. This was 864 years after Ephraim and Manasseh adopted into Israel in 1639 BC in Egypt, two patriarchs who would father peoples that would become mighty empires in the last days. The Battle of Kuruksata in 1879 BC was fought between the East and West exactly 1104 years, 552 plus 552 earlier, and this year of 775 BC is 480 years after the Danaan dynasty of Mycenae was founded in 1255 BC, the Mycenaeans governing over the Peloponnese. This was exactly 8064 months, 864, or 672 years after the exodus of Israel from Egypt in 1447 BC, in 1872 months, 156 years, of the Divided Kingdom chronology, 1872 being 144 times 13. This begins exactly 2880 years, 144 times 20 before Armageddon. 767 BC, 3128 AM. 22 years before Israel was carried away captive to the land of Assyria, the prophet Hosea foretold that this would occur. Hosea is commended by God to marry an adulterous woman named Goma, this being a prophetic foreshadowing of the time coming when adulterous Israel would be removed to the north. Interestingly, the prophet's name, Hosea, was the same name as Israel's last king, Hosea, who was on the throne when Assyria came and took the ten tribes by force and deported them in 745 BC. As this was 680 years after Israel escaped Egypt in the Exodus in 1447 BC, this is exactly 244,800 days, 2448. This is factored easily on the ancient year of 360 days a year. 765 BC, 3130 AM. The prophet Amos foretold that the Israelites would be led captive out of the land. His prophecy dated two years before the great quake of 763 BC, during Uzziah's reign over Judah and Joash of Israel. 763 BC, 3132 AM. King Uzziah of Judah usurps authority and office of the priests violating Mosaic law. When Uzziah was in the most holy place, an earthquake occurred in Jerusalem and Judah as the solar eclipse occurred over Assyria according to an Assyrian eponym. The inhabitants of Jerusalem fled to the hills for fear of collapsing buildings. The temple wall cracked and bright sunlight pierced the inner darkness and illuminated King Uzziah and he was instantly seized with leprosy and subsequently banished from the city. Pliny the Elder wrote over seven centuries later that there was a long demonstrable history of earthquakes attending eclipses. This was the 240th year after the throne of David was established in Jerusalem in 1003 BC. 1. Zechariah 2. Secrets of Time 3. Josephus Antiquities 753 BC, 3142 AM The beginning of Rome was in this year by all accounts and the first king was Romulus who orchestrated a treaty with the local Sabines to enlarge the Latin state in Italy. A container of earth was deposited in the foundation containing dirt from Troy. The Latins had a long history as well as the Sabines, but a newer people had emerged as the great power in Etruria, 
called the Etruscans. The Latins early on were merged racially with the Edomites and blood of Esau through Zepho and his kin. The Latins claimed no glorious history, but exiles from Asia Minor arrived, claiming descent from Troy, landed on their shores, and from these men emerged Rome. This was a large body of men who landed without women, as will be explained in 749 BC. It had been anciently prophesied, according to Lactantius, that a mighty empire would be born from a colony of Trojans. The Romans themselves identified themselves as the descendants of Troy, and in the fourth letter of Hillel III, among the Vatican archives, we read that about 2,000 years ago it was the majority opinion that Rome's origin was with descendants of the Trojan state, along with other adventurers who established themselves along the banks of the Tiber. A late translator of the book of Jasher sometime after 753 BC rendered a passage in Jasher, quote, And the children of Chittim are the Romim, who dwell in the valley of Canopia by the river Tibru, Tiber, unquote. The Trojans are called the people of Dardanus, and this is why they chose to migrate to Italy. In scripture, peoples are called by the names of the geography they inhabit. One of Japheth's son was Javan, who himself had four sons that became nations, Elishim, Tarshish, Chittim, Dudanim. These people took up residence in Asia Minor, along the Aegean coast and Italian peninsula, and Sicily and Sardinia. Tarshish in Asia Minor was later rendered Tarsus, home to the famous Apostle Paul. The Chittim were the Latins of Italy, and the Dudanim along the coast were the Trojans of Ilium, who claimed descent from Dardan, Dudon, plural being Dudanim. When the Trojan exiles arrived in Italy, their speech was understood because these exiles were racially and linguistically kin to the Chittim. The city of Rome was initially called Septimontium, or City on Seven Mountains, and Romulus was the first of the seven kings of Rome. During his reign in the beginning of Roman history, it was prophesied that the end of Rome would be under another ruler named Romulus, and this was indeed fulfilled in 476 AD, when the German kingdoms came together and defeated Rome. Incidentally, the founding of Rome in 753 BC was 476 years after the fall of Troy in 1229 BC. Tradition asserts that Romulus was a murderer who killed his brother Remus for the kingship, and this parallels the fact that Cain kills his brother Abel, and Cain died in the year 753 Annus Mundi, 3142 BC. There were five tribes in ancient Italy at this time. Only one of them were known outsiders and not descendants of Japheth or Javan. Today we refer to these people as Etruscans, but the early Romans called them Umbri, which is Latin for Hebrew. These people were Hebrew Phoenicians who settled in Italy about three to four centuries earlier. It is known that before settling in Italy and founding Etruria, these people had come from Asia Minor. Livy, about 2,000 years ago, wrote that the Etruscans were a Semitic people, organised into 12 peoples, who were very learned in religious law and matters, a people who held nothing more sacred than their ancient religion. Livy also related that the holy men and priests of the Etruscans were by sacred law all from the same tribe, Levites. The Etruscans were probably part of the great Israelite migrations of 1365 and 1345 BC. The Danaan and Ionian waves that settled in Asia Minor and formed the Ionic states before again relocating to Italy shortly after the Trojan War. It has been found that the Trojan hero Aeneas was venerated in their art. The Etruscan alphabet derived from the Greek alphabet that was in use about 700 BC, which we know came from the older Phoenician alphabet. The Etruscan language was not Greek nor Latin. They merely adopted Greek in their script. This year, the founding of Rome was 828 years, 414 plus 414 after Zepho, grandson of Esau, begins to live and rule among the Chittim of Italia, or two cursed earth periods. This was also 612 years, half of 1224, after the Danaan migrated throughout the Peloponnese in 1365 BC. 612 is a quarter of 2448, and the sum of 1224 is a timeline found between many events in world history related to Israel and its descendants. 
Rome will be known by its neighbours as the Ravening Wolf, and these people will emerge to be terrible foes to first Israel and Israelite-descended peoples, but later to Christians and Christian institutions. Nothing has done more damage to the Christian faith than the Roman Church. The first victims the Roman spirit of Esau will afflict, conquer and absorb are the Jacob-descended Etruscans. 753 BC begins the Ab Urbe Condita calendar, or from the founding of the city. Tiglath Pileser III of Assyria in this year conquered the northern tribes north of Assyria. An Indo-European people descended from Japheth settled around the Black Sea. These were the ancestors of those people who would be forced to integrate with the Israelites after 745 BC and later, a people who would arise in history as the mighty German nations. The same Germans that would in 476 AD conquer Rome. In this year Rome was founded, the Assyrians conquered those people that would defeat Rome. 1. Cicero on government for Balbus. 2. The discoverers, Burstin. 3. The Magus, volume 2. 4. Nature worship. 5. The Arco, volume. 6. Jasha. 7. Tracing our ancestors. 8. A short history of the world. 10. Livy, Early History of Rome. 11. The Origin of Greek Civilization. 12. A History of Civilization, Volume 1. 751 BC, 3144 AM. As Babylon gained more and more freedom from the mighty Assyrian overlords, King Nabonassar instituted a new calendar in this year. This was 888 years after Ephraim and Manasseh, received the adoption into Israel and the blessing to be mighty empires in the last days in 1639 BC. 749 BC, 3146 AM. Rome was founded by a large multitude of men who had landed without women, men who claimed descent from Troy. They asked their Sabine neighbours to provide them with women, a request denied. In this year, the Romans devised a plan and orchestrated a Neptune festival and invited all their neighbours. The Sabines brought their families to enjoy the gathering, and at a signal, the Romans kidnapped many Sabine women from the crowds. This exact same event occurred 1104 years priorly in 1853 BC, when the children of Tubal, called Sabines because of where they dwelt, refused to give their daughters over to the Chittim. 1104 years is 552 times 2, the beginning of the Chittim and the beginning of the Romans began with the rape of the Sabine women. Remarkably, the end of the Roman monarchy in 509 BC comes about behind a revolt after Rome's seventh king, Tarquin, the proud son, rapes a woman and she opts to die rather than see him live. This abduction of the Sabine women was 240 years before the fall of Roman monarchy in 509 BC and 480 years, 240 plus 240, after the fall of Troy in 1229 BC. 747 BC, 3148 AM. In the fifth year of tiglath pileser III of Assyria, he invaded the west and campaigned against the Mediterranean coastal nations to obtain cedar and received tribute from Byblos, Sidon and Arwad. These were Phoenician cities with significant Israelite populations. This was 700 years after the Exodus in 1447 BC and 184 years after Israel and Judah became two separate kingdoms in 931 BC or 2208 months, 552 times 4, 1 Phoenicians. 745 BC, 3150 AM. Assyrian king tiglath pileser III invades the west and takes captive hundreds of thousands of Israelites among the ten tribes of Israel, and begins the massive deportation program. Israel is broken, as prophesied by Isaiah, and foretold to the king of Judah in 810 BC, the 65 years having come to pass. This is 136 years after Samaria was founded by King Omri, or 48,960 days, 24,480 plus 24,480. Israelites are force marched into the regions north and east of the Assyrian frontiers to create buffer states, and others are brought by force to occupy the land of the Israelites. 
This is exactly two 16 years, 108 times 2, after Tiglath Pileser II founded the Neo Assyrian Empire in 961 BC at Nineveh, and 108 years after King Shalmaneser fought Israel and others in the Battle of Karkar. This date was particularly connected to the Phoenix chronology. The 745 BC fall of Israel to Assyria was 414 years, cursed earth period, after the Kassite dynasty of Babylon fell to Assyria in 1159 BC. It was also 552 years, Phoenix cycle, after 1273 BC, when the Assyrian Empire began and Babylon was annexed. The seal of Israel was the Great Pyramid, and this was also 2070 Anno Pyramid, or 414 times 5, or 5 cursed earth periods. The next nation to adopt the Great Pyramid as its official seal will be the United States, which was born in 1776 AD, or exactly 2520 years, 360 times 7, after the Israelites were deported. The Assyrians would return again in 721 BC to gather the rest of the Israelites 24 years later, or 8640 days. This was 666 years after 1411 BC, when Israel first began their aggressive campaign to occupy the land. Tiglath Pileser II also conquers Babylon in this year, founding the resurgence of the Assyrian Empire. This is 138 years, Phoenix orbit, before 607 BC, 1656 months being 414 times 4, or 552 times 3, when Assyria falls to Babylon. Between the Caspian and Black Seas north of Assyria were the descendants of the Kassites, a people originally from Elam or Indo-European pedigree. They had overran Babylon and were a constant problem to the Assyrians along the frontiers. The Assyrians settled many of the Israelites among them on their northern frontier and more along their eastern domains. The amalgamation between the Japhetic nomads, Kassites and Israelites created a unique people that quickly populated the regions of the Caspian and Black Seas, a culture and race that would vex Rome over and over again, known as the Germans. The German migrations into Europe from Mesopotamia is evidenced by the genetic mutation CCR5 Delta 32. According to Professor Christopher Duncan and Dr. Susan Scott of the University of Liverpool Biology Department, this mutation first occurred in Mesopotamia near to the Euphrates and Tigris rivers sometime around 1150 to 1000 BC. Researcher Hugh Montgomery wrote that this gene mutation is found hardly at all in Mesopotamia today, but in unusually high levels in Scandinavia. Interestingly, in ancient Gaul, the descendants of the Kassites were called Kassai. The date of the Assyrian deportation is fixed in Assyrian eponyms. Tiglath Pileser III's annals mention that he received tribute from Samaria, from a city called Menahem, mentioning also the land of Beth Omri, House of Omri. Though whole tribes were taken into Assyria, the capital Samaria was not overcome. It would be 24 more years before Samaria would fall. An inscription of Tiglath Pileser III reads, quote, Bit Humria, house of Omri, the wide land of Naphtali in its entirety, I brought within the border of Assyria, unquote. Other Assyrian references to Israel being taken captive call the Israelites Beth Suk, or house of Isaac. Recall that it was mentioned earlier that concerning future Israel, scriptures read, In Isaac shall thy seed be called. An Assyrian inscription of King Adad Nirari mentions the land of Omri. The Assyrians thus referred to Israel by its dynastic name Omri, which translates into Assyrian and Babylonian as Qumri, Omri, and Gimari. When referring to a people, we find the Israelites in Assyria called Kimurians, Cimmerians, and Gimari in reference to the Israelite dynasty. But in reference to their ethnicity, they were called Bitsak, house of Isaac, and Sakai, Sake, Latin, Saka, and Sakasuna, which is the origin of the term Scythians. The Saka and the Chimerians or Kimeri, were the same people. 
It is a demonstrable fact that no ancient historians excavated records from antiquity which ever mentioned these people until this date. In less than three centuries, these people, from between the Black and Caspian Seas, will explode onto the historical scene in a series of well-documented migrations into the West, to Europe and north into Asia. The term Scythian was original, a geographical designation for any group of wandering peoples north of Assyria, but it would become the main designation for the Israelites from this date forward. It has been published that a close study of ancient Cimmerian beliefs points to the fact that it mirrored the patriarchal faith of the Old Testament. Some researchers claim that Cimmerians could possibly derive from the Simeni or tribe of Simeon, and that Scythians derives from the Hebrew succothites or dwellers in booths. When the Assyrians invaded the population of Israel, it was significantly lower than expected. For over six centuries this people multiplied, filled the land and spilled over with whole groups and families departing upon fleets for faraway coasts and countries. The biblical record is very specific that the Israelites would come to populate the entire world. The oldest books in the Bible relate that concerning Israel's descendants, quote, his seed shall be in many waters, unquote, numbers and that the tribes of Zebulun and Gad, quote, shall suck from the abundance of the seas, unquote, Deuteronomy. Gad was prophesied to be, quote, a haven for ships, unquote. The prophet Isaiah had the most to say about Israel's future in, quote, the isles afar off, unquote, who are spread throughout the coasts of the earth in the isles afar off. The people of Israel shall be in the islands afar off to the north and west, and in Isaiah 66:19. We read that they were to occupy the lands of Javan, ancient Greece, Italy, Sicily and Sardinia, as a place they shall escape to. Israel shall sing songs glorifying God in the isles of the earth, Isaiah, for Israel shall pass us through the waters from the ends of the earth. Israel shall be spread throughout the whole world as outcasts among the islands of the sea. Keep silence before me, O islands, and let the people, Israel, renew their strength. But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend, thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth. The Lord shall comfort Zion, the isles shall wait upon me, and on my arm shall they trust. Isaiah here describes how the Israelites will relocate to the islands and coasts, weakened in travail, but they will grow strong and populous. The prophet Zechariah also sees this, quote, and I will sow them among the people, and they shall remember me in far countries, shall pass through the sea of affliction, and shall smite the waves of the sea, unquote. Zechariah. These prophecies of Israel are fulfilled. Since 1407 BC, Israelite tribes have been sailing off to reappear along the coasts of the entire Mediterranean and Aegean coasts and even the Atlantic. There are two types of migrations of Israel throughout the world. This year, 745 BC, begins the second wave, a series of migrations by land. The biblical prophecies concerning Israel's overland wanderings are more and more specific than those concerning Israel's taking to the seas. These will be reviewed in 721 BC. 1. Secrets of Time 2. A Short History of the World 3. The God Kings of Europe 5. Post-Captivity Names of Israel 2. Kings 7. Tracing Our Ancestors 8. Found Among Inscriptions of Kala, Post-Captivity Names of Israel 11. The Bible Fraud 741 BC, 3154 AM At this time the prophets Micah and Isaiah were prophesying to the people. Israel is now referred to as Ephraim which at the beginning of the captivity under Assyria, Ephraim had become the most populous and dominant tribe. Though Israel was to fill the earth, only a small remnant would return to the land. 1. Micah, Isaiah 723 BC, 3172 AM Shalmaneser V invaded Israel and the Assyrians again deported Israelites into their land. He began to besiege the city of Samaria but was instantly recalled back to Assyria by his father 
Tiglath Pileser III and punished for unknown reasons. His kingship was given over to Sargon II. The siege would last almost three years. Sargon II's campaign mirrored his predecessor's campaign into the west for three years, Sargon I of Akkad. This was the siege of Samaria, which began 138 years, 1656 months, 552 times 3 or 414 times 4, before Jerusalem would fall in 585 BC to the Babylonians, beginning their own deportation into the east. This was exactly 204 years, 2448 months, after Egypt sacked Jerusalem and took away the temple vessels and sacraments in 927 BC. 1. End of Days to Sargon the Magnificent 721 BC, 3174 AM Sargon II succeeded Shalmaneser V and conquered Samaria. In the Book of Two Kings we read, And the king of Assyria did carry away Israel into Assyria, and put them in Hala and in Habor by the river Gozan, and in the cities of the Medes. This reveals the cunning of the Assyrians in their deportation program. The Medes were growing in might. In fact, they were specifically mentioned in the writings of the prophets as the rising to defeat Assyria. The Assyrians did not want to strengthen Israel by deporting this second wave to the same location as the first in 745 BC, who were placed between the Black and Caspian Seas. Instead, these Israelites were placed among the eastern borders and inside the region of Media. In the inscriptions of the palace of Sargon II, we read, In the beginning of my reign I besieged, I took the city of Samaria. 27,280 of its inhabitants I carried away. I took them to Assyria and put into places people whom I conquered. It is noteworthy that the Israelites called Saka from Isaac as found on the Behistun rock inscription, found media favourable and quickly emerged as a dominant people in the country. Called also Saki, Saks, beginning with their occupation of media, the Israelites prospered and became strong, and from this year onward they would literally fulfil the prophecy of Jeremiah. Quote, Thou, Israel, art my battle axe and weapons of war, for with thee will I break in pieces the nations. And with thee will I destroy kingdoms, unquote. From this point on, in virtually every major battle and war fought among the nations of the Near East and later throughout Western history, Israelites and their blood descendants will fight on the battlefields at the rise and fall of kingdoms and empires. Assyria will collapse under the might of armies with Israelite auxiliaries. Then Babylon will fall as Israelites fight side by side with Persians and Medians and Persia will fall to the Macedonians, who were descended from Israelites. Egypt will use Israelites as auxiliaries and mercenary armies and will fall, as will Carthage, Pontus, Armenia, Judea and even Rome. In every incident, the descendants of Israel play a decisive and major role. This will continue throughout European history through global colonial wars with the great empires of Spain, Germany, Britain and the United States, up to the Battle of Armageddon, when resurrected Israelites and those adopted into the family of God fight the sons of darkness and their mortal armies in the year 2106 AD, 6000 AM. In the empty lands of the northern kingdom of Israel, Shalmaneser V had displaced a Persian people called Cuthians, settling them into Israel. These people brought their idol gods with them, and immediately a plague afflicted them. They understood the source of their trouble and sent envoys into Assyria to inquire among the deported Israelites about their god. Learning about the god of the Hebrews, they abandoned their own and worshipped him. The plague ceased. Sargon II in inscriptions boasted of having conquered the whole land of Bit Omri, Israel. The Israelites of Samaria were called Chimerians and Kimri later to be called the Kimbri, a Germanic people. Sargon II usurps the throne of Assyria and arms his troops with iron weapons, providing his forces an advantage against the other armies employing copper and bronze armour and weapons. The Assyrians were the first to expound the doctrine of blood and iron. They are the first iron empire, an empire with a central government that spans out far beyond its own national borders, to rule others with fear and terror, for the Assyrians were ruthless and mighty in siege warfare. 
H.G. Wells wrote that Sargon II was not his original name or Assyrian title, but he adopted it to flatter the conquered Babylonians by reminding them of their ancient founder of the Akkadian Empire, Sargon. Intriguingly, the first Sargon, Nimrod, also usurped the throne in 1947 BC. In an inscription of Sargon II, he boasts of subduing the land of Dilmun, a paradise island, and interestingly, a far more ancient text of the first, Sargon the Great, 12 centuries earlier, asserts that, quote, Dilmun my hand captured, unquote. Sargon II founded Fort Sargon, known as Khorazbad, 12 miles northeast of Nineveh. He left a record claiming the wall around Fort Sargon to be 16,283 cubits, which he wrote, quote, is the number of my name, unquote. We recall that the prophets claimed that the Antichrist in the last days would be an Assyrian, and 666 would be the number of his name. In this year of 721 BC, planet Phoenix passed through the inner solar system. It last entered the inner solar system in 859 BC, and the Assyrians were expecting it, representing it as the winged disc. 138 years before that was 997 BC, and the event was recorded by David as the appearance of the angel of death. 138 years before that, in 1135 BC, it darkened the sun and brought in the height of the Dark Age. And 138 years prior to that was 1273 BC, the first year of the Assyrian Empire. Now, in 721 BC, we arrive at the 32nd year of King Romulus of Rome, paralleling the 32nd year of Nimrod in 1915 BC, when Nibiru appeared, who was known as Sargon the Great. Augustine cites Marcus Varro as relating that toward the latter reign of Rome's first King Romulus, the sun darkened. Augustine wrote that this eclipse of the sun was like the one that occurred when Christ was crucified. He wrote, quote, For it is sufficiently demonstrated that this latter obscuration of the sun did not occur by the natural laws of the heavenly bodies, because it was then the Jewish Passover. Unquote. Here it is admitted that the sun darkened, not by the moon, but by some unknown body. Augustine wrote that the ancient chroniclers spoke not only of the sun darkening, but also of a sudden storm. Both Phoenix and Assyria are linked by these three dates, 1273 BC, 859 BC, and 721 BC, a 552 years period. This dreadful year for Israel was 408 years, or 2448 plus 2448 months after 1129 BC, when Assyria conquered Babylon, and 240 years, 86,400 days, after 961 BC, when the Neo-Assyrian Empire began. This reflects the fact that in this year, the 24th, the Assyrian deportation plan was completed, or 8640 days, 24 times 360. This deportation was by the design of God, from the beginning, the tribes of Israel were to become nations of the earth and empires as they steadily multiplied and filled the world with their progeny. God told Jacob, Israel, quote, A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee, and kings shall come out of thy loins, unquote. Genesis. Genesis reads that Israel's seed, quote, shall become a multitude of nations, unquote. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee, and in thy seed, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest." Unquote. Isaiah the prophet wrote that the outcasts of Israel would be spread across the face of the earth, as also the, quote, dispersed of Judah, unquote, Isaiah. This admits that the Israelites were a distinctive group from Judah in their separation and wanderings. He further wrote that Israel would be far away in the north, the west, and as far as Sinim, far east. They will, quote, be scattered far unto all the ends of the earth, unquote, and that in this way, quote, increases the nation, unquote, Isaiah. 
quote, He shall cause them that come of Jacob to take root. Israel shall blossom and bud, and fill the face of the world with fruit, unquote. Jeremiah the prophet wrote that Israel shall come out of the north. Zechariah wrote that Israel shall increase, quote, And I will sow them among the people, and they shall remember me in far countries, unquote. Micah the prophet wrote that, quote, the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles in the midst of many people, like a lion among beasts of the forest, unquote. Amos. The psalmist wrote that Israel was to receive, quote, the uttermost part of the earth for a possession, unquote, which is indeed what occurred with the burst of the United States of America and the western expansion of the USA from the Atlantic to the Pacific, the coast of California being the farthest west anyone can travel in the lower 48. In the Gospel of John, we see that the children of Israel were, quote, scattered abroad, unquote. In the days of Paul, the apostle Israel was considered a commonwealth, Ephesians. And the author James began his New Testament book, quote, James, the servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting, Unquote. Under the date 745 BC, we saw the biblical passages that declared that Israel would take to the seas and settle the coasts of the earth. Now we find that Israel will also spread across the world by land as well. Not one of these prophecies concerns sailing or seas, but are in a broader sense simply mentioning that Israel will fill the earth with people. Thus far this has already been occurring. Over 680 years ago, the Danites departed, then successive waves of Danites, Gadites, and the men of Zebulun departed Israel in fleets and became the Ionian and Danaan Greeks, even making it to ancient Ireland. Already there were Aegean and Mediterranean cultures descended from Israel who had forgotten who they were. The prophecies concerning Israel forgetting their identity will be addressed later in this chronology. 1. Tracing our ancestors. 2. Kings. 4. Jeremiah. 5. Antiquities. Josephus. 6. Post-captivity names of Israel. 7. Philosopher and the Druid. 8. A short history of the world. 10. Flying serpents and dragons. 11. The Cosmic Code. Hidden Codes. Mystic Numbers. Sitchin. 12. Augustine. City of God. Book 3. 720 BC, 3175 AM. It is noted by historians that beginning in and about 720 BC, on through 680 BC, those peoples we know as the Greeks were galvanized into a body of social unity. This unification over a 40 year period beginning about 720 BC was no doubt behind the popularity of the games of Zeus and the meeting of many peoples from scattered parts at the event every four years. In this year, the Olympics became an all-nude competition, many believing this started with a runner named Orsippos of Megara, who won a foot race naked. This change was astounding to foreigners who were shocked that aristocrats would remove their status symbols, robes, crowns, bracelets, torques, and compete side by side with social inferiors. 1. The origin of Greek civilization. 2. The naked Olympics. 718 BC. 3177 AM. This is the Annus Mundi year provided by Geraldus Cambrensis for the flooding of the Lo in the reign of Jaka Labruin of ancient Ireland, a king. Cambrensis wrote that many of the ancient towers were submerged beneath the lake. The towers throughout Ireland are a source of mystery, many believing that the Tuatha de Danann erected them. They are masterworks of masonry with odd acoustical properties. This date is most likely five years off the true date of 713 BC, when a major global disaster took place. 716 BC, 3179 AM. The kingship of Rome passes from Romulus to King Numa Pompilius, whose reign would endure 43 years. He was renowned for justice, Livy relating that Numa was deeply reverent a virtual scholar and learned in all the laws of God and man, one Livy. 713 BC, 3182 AM. 
The son of Sargon II, King Sennacherib of Assyria, came against Judah and Jerusalem. King Hezekiah was afraid and consulted the prophet Isaiah, this being his fourteenth year of reign. In the temple, the prophet told the king not to worry, for God would send a blast upon the Assyrians, and Jerusalem would be saved. Though Sennacherib would escape, he would be killed in his own land. As the Assyrian army approached, the dark satellite passed close to the earth, a former rock and metal moon of Nibiru of unusual size. In transit, it weakened the sun's gravitational hold on earth and the world stopped spinning on its axis and then retrograded 10 degrees, which is not impossible, for the Earth hangs upon nothing. Tidal forces pushed Earth into a slightly elliptical orbit, which immediately resulted in the lengthening of the solar year from 360 days to 365.25 days a year. Immense electromagnetic friction caused a flux tube that vaporized 185,000 Assyrian soldiers that opposed Jerusalem. This completed the 395-year orbit of the dark satellite. The 185,000 soldiers in their armour, with their gear and weapons, were a perfect antenna. The Israelites later visited the spot and discovered that the entire host had been vaporised in their armour, and they received dignitaries from Babylon requesting to know if the temple records had anything at all about such an event occurring in the past. Sennacherib himself had boasted to Hezekiah of Jerusalem that not even God himself could deliver them from the hands of Assyria. The Assyrian Annals of Sennacherib confirms the biblical record that King Hezekiah did not surrender, nor was he taken. Quote, As to Hezekiah, he did not submit to my yoke. I laid siege to 46 of his strong cities, walled forts, and to the countless small villages in their vicinity and conquered them by means of well-stamped earth ramps and battering rams. I drove out 200,150 people. Himself I made a prisoner in Jerusalem, unquote. These captive Judahites do vanish into history, but become a mighty people, the Jutes, who would later roam through Asia, Europe, and eventually assault the British Isles. Sennacherib's assassination is also confirmed in Assyrian records of his youngest son, Esarhaddon, who succeeded him. Esarhaddon was the father of Ashurbanipal. This year concludes the sixth bucktun of the Maya Long Count, or 864,000 days from 3113 BC, when the Mayan calendar began 2400 years earlier. 864 is the foundation of time number, C3031 BC. And in this year, the world's calendars are altered. The ancient world only knew a 360-day year, which to the Mayan was the Tun 360, the basis for Mayan prophetic timekeeping. The 360-day year mirrored the 360 degrees of heaven, a fact recognised by the early Hebrews. In Sanskrit, Brahmanic and Vedic texts, Hindu writings, by the Sumerians, Babylonians, Assyrians, Egyptians and even the Romans, the Persians added five days to the calendar, the Gatha days or bad luck days. These additional five days were the Nemon Temi in Mexico or useless days. Even Pliny the Elder admits that the ancient Athenians knew the year to be 360 days. The sun standing still is an event remembered well in the myths of the world, many recalling how it reversed its course in the sky. In the early Americas, it was said that one day the sun rose in the morning and then hovered before setting again where it was supposed to arise. Amazing confirmation of this calendrical change comes from the fact that Roman records cite that in the reign of Numa Pompilius, this being his third year, he changed the calendar in Rome from 360 days to 365.25 days a year. Livy reporting that at this time the beginning of the civil year was January 1st. Interestingly, King Hezekiah of Jerusalem was also said to have altered the calendar. Lucius Piso in his Annals wrote that King Numa Pompilius called lightning down from heaven through an incantation. This was no doubt a memory of the flux tube phenomenon occurring between Earth and the dark satellite. This lightning from heaven caused the death of the 185,000 Assyrians, an event also mentioned by the Babylonian historian priest Berossus. 
We have further evidence that the alteration of the sun's course occurred in February. It was during the reign of Numa Pompilius, according to Plutarch, that the year was changed. The Februm was a sacred purification ceremony conducted at this time in the year. Research published in 1949 AD shows that scientists G. Folgherreiter discovered on Attic and Etruscan art that the magnetic polarity of Earth changed in the 8th century BC. Scholars have erred in calculating the Mayan long count calendar by the vague year system of 365.25 days a year, thinking that the longevity of the world had always been measured with this annual unit. The entire mathematical predicate of the Mayan system demands a year of 360 days, or the arithmetic is corrupted. Without considering this and without taking into consideration in 713 BC that the calendar changed, the scholars have devised a Mayan end date in 2012 AD, which is exactly 34 years off from the true and end date when time will collapse. Earth's present orbit altered permanently in 2046 AD at the Passover of Nibiru. In the 32nd year of Nimrod, Nibiru passed in 1915 BC, and in the 32nd year of Romulus Phoenix, passed in 721 BC, and this is the 32nd year of the post-exilic chronology that started in 745 BC, when the Israelites were carried into Assyrian captivity. This was the year 3182 Annus Mundi, or 3182 years, since man was banished in 3895 BC. In this year, Judah was delivered by God from Assyria, and 3182 is the grammatical sum for Lion of the Tribe of Judah, as found in Revelation 5.5, according to Bonnie Gaunt. This year forward until 2046 AD, every year will be 365.25 days in length. 1. A sire. 2. A short history of the world. 3. Two kings. 4. Tracing our ancestors. 6. Prism B. Annals of Esarhaddon. 7. The Mayan Prophecies for 2012. 8. Alexander the Great. The Antediluvian World. 9. Natural History. Mining and Minerals. Pliny. 10. Cosmic Codes. Missler. 13. Pliny. Natural History. The Universe and the World. 14. Josephus Antiquities. 15. Ages in Chaos. Volume 2.